Hello and welcome to the Ruby Podcast. I am really happy for Mariano Rivera. 100% first time ever that has happened for the MLB Hall of Fame. I am the Sandman Mediocrity. It is me, High Powered, back from the dredges of Tarkov. And boy, we had an episode and we're about to have a season finale. And... I, we don't know what's. It feels like volume three all over again. That's what it feels like. I'm gonna take a shot for every time High Power says we had an episode this week. <laughs> <laughs> we had an episode. I mean, uh, just don't t- just don't take a shot every time he says also. <laughs> oh no, I don't. I don't have enough. I don't have enough alcohol for that. Yeah, <laughs> I say that. I I need to work on that. I don't think uh, I have I, enough left for that. Uh, for, for Robert, for Robert, it's uh, I I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, unfortunately, it's like for me. It's need, like for me. I need to work on my filler words. I I am fully aware of that. I realized that. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. It's, I've been. It's, I think that I've tried to work on that too, and I feel the best thing to do is to just not say anything. <laughs> just if you're gonna say like, just don't say anything. Just, just stop. Don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll just I'll just cut out everything. That's what I've been told to. That's what I've been told to do in the past too. So uh, you're right. That's that's what you do when you're public speaking. But we're such a we live in such a conversational culture that you kind of need filler words to be like I'm not I'm not done yet. I'm not. Done. It's not your time. It's still my time to talk. No, stop. No. <laughs> well, yeah, in English, especially in English too. I mean, Japanese is like that too. Japanese very has very specific filler words as well. So anyway, oh I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what that baseball reference was, but I know Mariano <laughs> Rivera is amazing. And, oh, the uh, best closer of all time. Yeah, easily. Uh, sorry, I'm from New Jersey, so I am a legit Yankees fan, and I'm also a Jets fan. But I'm also a Rams, which is unfortunate. But I'm also a Rams fan because I'm in LA and nobody likes the Chargers. So I don't care if that call was literally the worst call in the history of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> but the Rams are in the Super Bowl, but the Patriots are in the Super Bowl, and they're probably going to win. So, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I am I like dude, what the heck. I'm a Jets fan. I can't like the Patriots. I don't hate them as <laughs> much as most people do. But the problem is that both teams made it in because of bad calls this year. Both teams. Because yeah. that pass interference – that sorry, that roughing the passer call on Tom Brady was literally Roger Goodell just saying, make sure Tom Brady's in the Super Bowl. <laughs> ah. And, uh, and okay, my turn. Yeah, sorry. So <laughs> I am Professor Tor Cool Guy, aka Robert. Or yeah, and yeah, looking forward to this one. I feel like this might be a short podcast, but yeah. Oh no, no I don't no, think no, so. No, I think no, 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 no. really. Okay, I know media has a lot I... to say. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's not so much about the episode; it's what the episode has derailed into via the phantom yeah exactly there's mm-hmm. a lot to talk about based going off of last week's episode and all that sort of thing yeah, yeah. okay fair enough and but, uh, yeah, i'm professor see. tor cool guy kudos to anyone who knows what that's a reference to i do not did the bumblebee shitstorm start up all over again this week he didn't start over it, it just is, continued yeah I- Actually, yeah. that's not it's not Bumblebee shitstorm. It's anti Bumblebee shitstorms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that's the kicker. It's, it's, yeah, the it's, Black it's, Sun are making are making the rest are making everyone look. It's bad. It's the Black Sun shippers proving that they were always every bit as bad as the Bumblebee shippers, but didn't want to admit it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And uh, let's see, you got Grimzilla on one side, a horde of Chimera on another. Man, Argus is just like Adam this episode. Double penetration. Yeah, Ar- yeah, no, Argus is Argus is yeah, Argus is getting some good DP right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Emphasis on the bull. At both ends. So bit rested. Yeah. Just... Emphasis on the bull. But yes, See, I am soccer card. When I, when I, when I, when I, yeah. When I told Dashi while we were watching uh, High School DxD that I wanted to see a redhead get double penetrated this week. This isn't what I was expecting. <laughs> See, that should be your intro, media. That should be your intro. Yeah, why was that not your intro? You could have mentioned Mariano Rivera because, later. Because Mariano Rivera it takes precedent in my heart. But you so see, what happened with him? What, what even happened? Wait, with him? so which who's what, the redhead what, and Argus what, getting uh, penetrated? Red, uh, <laughs> hmm. Adam. Oh, Adam's uh, Adam. like a semi redhead, isn't he? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay, redhead. you're right. Sorry, it looks my like bad. It's I was, died, but it's red. Did you still have your so, I was thinking Argus, and you were talking about Adam. No. Robert's sitting here, like on the podcast, like, yeah, Pierre's mom's got it going on. 
<laughs> she had glasses, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah, she does. She got that Magane thing going on. Yes. <clears throat> so anyway, what what? <laughs> so what happened with what happened with Mariana Rivera this week? I, I literally have no uh, idea. No, no, it was uh, earlier today. The MLB Hall of Fame announced um, who's going into the Hall of Fame this year, mm-hmm. and uh, Mariana Rivera, first ballot Hall of Famer, one. 100% of the ballot that has never happened. Babe Ruth never got 100%. Ty uh, Cobb didn't get 100%. Honest Wagner didn't get 100%. Hank Aaron. Uh, all these other legends. Greg Maddox didn't get 100%. Mariano Rivera did. Damn. I mean, that's kind of... I mean, I he definitely... That's not even a landslide. He's insane. That's not even a landslide at that point. That's just straight up, like... Yeah, you, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Rift. That's yeah. Yeah. Rift on a landslide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you have to get a you have to get five percent of the vote in order to stay on the ballot. You're only on the ballot for up to ten years, and uh, you have to get seventy five percent in order to uh, make the. That it's, that's a, that's how. The it just shows how important clutch factor is. I think in you sports. were talking about how Babe Ruth hasn't been let in yet. Uh, no, no, he's no, been no, in, no, but not. Did, yeah. Yeah, he got, like, yeah, yeah, he didn't get uh, 100% of the vote. He was first ballot as well, uh, for, uh, part of the first class of Hall of Famers, um, but he, he only got like 90-something-ish. Yeah. Welcome to the MLB podcast. We're... Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the, sorry, 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 the interesting like, this, thing... This, this, this uh, is the one day of the year that I'm like super pumped for baseball because it's just like... Uh, it takes me back to my childhood. And you're from the Midwest. Good, good, let's let's good, be honest. Good, you're, you're from good, the Midwest. Good. Yeah. So, yeah. baseball is. I'm I'm from California. I'm a weather fan. Yeah, I'm not a big I'm, baseball fan. I'm I'm from California where it's oh, all. The Dodgers are good. I hate the Dodgers. See, he, here's oh. okay. Here's the thing. You have to understand that in Southern California, uh, Dodgers and Raiders fans are the trashiest people in general. <laughs> like they're the kind of Mexicans that make me like make me look bad uh, as a Mexican. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. It's the, you know what I mean? Like the bat, like, you know, like Florida uh, yeah, makes, yeah, the Black, Florida the Blackhawks make, in Chicago, the hockey team uh, has, has a similar problem. It's sort of like how the Seattle Seahawks and just in Florida makes white people look bad, right? Like yeah. when you're a white person, you are ashamed of everything Florida does. I'm ashamed of what yeah. Do- of Dodgers fans and Raiders fans as a Mexican. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. So that's kind of the problem. So I I, I absolutely despise. Uh, all right. So... The, the teams are like you know gangs <laughs> being a gangster and like being a bad team and especially the Raiders being bad and being an asshole is a good thing. Like fuck, I, that's what I don't. Understand. Hey 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 Tim hey Timmy, what's your favorite Ruby podcast? <laughs> I like the one where media do talk about sports for a long time. While <laughs> Anyway, so this uh, episode, so this, I just lost. I probably was just smirking in the background while race, wait, race is being talked about. Like, just like, oh, Coop's see, oh, Coop's and it's, and, and here's the thing: because I, I'm allowed to talk about those things because I'm Mexican, so I have to play that card when I when I'm allowed to. I yeah, can yeah, say no, those are the bad Mexicans. Fair enough. It's okay, oh, but you man. you can't hate on if you can't you, hate on Florida. You, man, okay? If you've ever Florida watched man, crazy stuff. If you've ever watched uh, Chris, I think it's it's Chris Rock's Black People versus the N Word. That stand-up hmm. routine speaks for literally every race, every person. It's one of the best stand-up routines of all time. It's probably the best eight minutes of stand-up in the entire world. I because it, I miss, it speaks like, to everybody. Old school, I miss old school Eddie Murphy. Oh, and old school Eddie school Murphy was yeah. raw yeah. and delirious. Are two of the greatest stand-ups of all. Like, like full I think he's like. How do you tell us like magic? <laughs> I, I think his opening act is uh is like a joke yeah. where like Hitler like the kid standing on top of the tree pissing on someone and well, it's like it's raining and and how the one of his jokes ends with like his like like the he hit his head like and he's bleeding and he's holding a turd in his hand in the bathtub oh yeah the, the, that the, was and then the big round shark came <laughs> sticking GI Joe's up his butt yeah and stuff, and... <laughs> that's what it was GI oh, Joe my ass a turd in my hand and, and bleeding all over the bathtub yeah that shit was hilarious anyway so. This episode was weird because I liked it when I initially watched it. Like, I thought it was fine. When I went back to watch it the second time, I didn't want to watch it. I just didn't yeah. want to watch it. it. It's like, and to me, what I realized is they just did all of the most obvious things in this episode, which is too bad mm-hmm. because a lot of the previous episodes, they did some stuff that I wasn't expecting as much, and I really liked that. I even admitted I that I was guessing. glad that Adam was by himself. I was wrong on my initial thought on that, and I really liked it. 
yeah. then this episode they just did all of the most obvious things that we all said was were the most obvious things that were going to happen. Adam, yeah. do you know what Adam, this episode is? Adam died, and they and they didn't actually confirm Bubblebee. They just did more baiting. We don't know what it. I would would have been cool if Blake picked up his weapon, but she didn't. They threw it over the edge. That's dumb. that was a big misstep. That was right a big there. misstep. Was, yeah. Um, I don't know. And I then, I, in my opinion, it's a misstep. And yeah. then they did do something with, with the cannon. Part. That's how they stopped the. That's how they stopped Cordovan. And of course, I mean that was a, mostly and just predictable it, because we've seen the preview. Yes, but, but yeah. also then they then then they came then a Grimm's coming and now they're gonna mm-hmm. have to work to go to help him stop it. Like I honestly don't. I don't. I can't think of anything really. I'm just worried it's just going to be a really obvious ending to the season where they just do, they just, okay, they have to fight and they have to help stop the Grimm yeah. and then they just hint at no, the villain no, 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 like, for next year. Dabs, dabs, yeah. dabs all with the silver yeah. eyes. So, so, so here, here's what this episode was. It was a continuation of, it was a continuation and conclusion to uh, the, the two um, fights that had been going on for the last two volumes. Or not yeah. last, last two volumes. Last, last two, two volumes. Last two episodes. Um, <clears throat> and it was an inferior version of last week's episode. Yeah. It, last week's episode uh, I like. This episode these, is is an I think these last three of, It just doesn't look as it does it doesn't look as good as uh, last week's episode did. So to me this episode is the is like I, I said last week that that last week's episode was like Saturday morning cartoons as as fuck. Yeah. This week's episode is the worst part of Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> in my humble Saturday. opinion. It's a cliffhanger to the next Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. was that was another thing I didn't like about this episode, and I kind of expressed this in my review for uh, last week's episode because we uh, we had the preview. I kind of talked about it in the podcast as well. Uh, the cliffhanger last week was so okay. The cliffhanger with the Adam stuff was good. Uh, the cliffhanger with the Cordo stuff was retarded because they <laughs> revealed in the preview that the missile it, it, did it absolutely would. nothing. So why even have that especially with how clunky they're, they're, that last bit of the Cordo fight last week was with the with the missile like especially considering yeah. like how clunky and a mess that those couple shots were yeah even it's because the they're being floor, lazy guys. it's because they're being lazy with the previews they're just doing and like yes. yeah this last yes. one was just they're the beginning of the first it was, one and a half minute yeah, and it's not just really the first thinking minute about and like, half. Like what? during volume not, four we... and volume five, it was like a random slice out of the episode. By the way, did we get um the preview for next week already? No, 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 no yeah, Ruby no, Rewind. Yeah. This uh, week. No, the finale. There's no, no Ruby Rewind. Yeah, yeah. they had that day they off. Don't want to show I had okay, because I feel like we would have heard about it. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. realize it until like an hour ago when I was uh, rewatching the episode. I was like, wait, did we get a preview yesterday? No, no, I, I, no you should, I know we didn't like, get one because so. I know we <laughs> didn't get one because, because Tune. Mark, yeah. Yeah. They say Tune, because Tune is usually on that stuff. Tune is all over the place yeah. for that kind of yeah. stuff, so he's kind of our go-to guy for that. Yeah, yeah. he's our news core. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, shout out like to Tune Radio, you know, by the way. Shout out to Tune. <laughs> so basically, I mean, Weiss and I mean, sorry, we we basically break this episode down into two parts where. Yeah. They've, there's a fight with the robots. And there's the fight between Blake Yang and Adam. So mm-hmm. let's just work from one fight and we'll work into the other. Because at this, like chronology, doesn't really matter. No. In the grand scheme of things. No. Yeah. Uh, Let, let's do the Adam but, stuff first, since all of that was all together, whereas uh, the Cordo stuff was kind that's of fair. Yeah. Yeah. Cordova okay. was sprinkled in and out throughout the episode, but I, yeah, we could do that, all the that, Adam that stuff. And I, that and I want to start off positive for this one. Uh, I okay. Well, first, I have a negative thing to say about what happened with this fight because this is exactly okay. what I didn't want to. This, this is what happened that I didn't want to have happen uh, last episode when I talked about how it didn't make sense at the end of last episode. How when the episode ended, it felt like Blake and Yang were gonna win, even though they were getting their ass kicked the entire time. And I feel like that continued in this episode. It. <laughs> I don't because of that it didn't make the fight feel like it had a lot of stakes. Last week I we all I, I we disagree. all thought we all thought that Adam was going to die and that's exactly what happened. 
I mean, we thought See, it was, yeah, I, I yeah. think there was. I, think I there wanted. Was enough, I just wanted a bit more consequence I, I for the girls. Few, yeah, I think there were a few moments where, like, it was a little uncertain. Uh, like when uh, Adam slammed Blake through the cliff. And, oh, I like uh, that that happened. And she kind of fell down, and then uh, yeah. right after that, is, she, he's like, "A moment of truth, Yang. Are you faster than you were at Beacon?" And then she starts she's like, again. Uh, like, no, she, I'm she smarter than you because I have big brain and you're an IQ lit." <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that line was dumb. That fucking brain <laughs> like, stronger than you. I'm smarter than you. It's all like as she what says, as she <laughs> like right after she like literally caught his sword with her bare hand. Yeah, wait, no question. Did she say I'm hand. smarter than you, or did she say, or did she just say like I'm smarter? Maybe just I'm smarter, Cause, but because if she says I'm smarter, it makes more sense than what you guys are saying. Because it's just like no, I'm not, I'm not faster, but I'm using my head like my dad yeah, told me. Yeah, yeah, I, I think Sox right. I think Sox right on that. I, feel I didn't like think the we're line was supposed to take a, the takeaway we're supposed to take is that Adam's stupid, but eh. well, okay, I didn't actually get that. There's there's two parts. There's two parts of this. There's yeah, okay. There's everyone else. The audience thinks Adam's stupid. They think his story is stupid. But then they show, she, they're not talking about his like intelligence as far as like this just his character or stuff. I, I would argue if yeah. like we're, whatever they have like the if someone asks them about this at a like convention and they ask to be like oh we're gonna like further explain this line, I have a feeling they're gonna be like oh yeah the reason why Yang said that is because Adam's easy to provoke TM, uh, and spoiler question throw this man into the rooster teeth gulag. <laughs> He's not dead. <laughs> But, I mean, it's, uh, it's still oh. it's still a, was a good fight overall. Like it, th this is yeah. the most I've ever liked Adam, and this is yeah. the most I've ever liked Yang. I think. <laughs> so I mean, it's still a good scene overall. I just feel like it could have been even better. This is me having, in fairness, this is me having it, it, high expectations it, yeah. for them. Okay, which is a good thing. This could have been yeah, even yeah. better, but it was still solid. It's still the better part yeah, of the it's, episode. It's, obviously, it's not, it's not the it's not the most I've liked Yang, but it's certainly the most I've liked. Blake. Yeah, Blake's yeah. was actually Which is not saying much for you, Media, which is not saying much for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it's not the most I've true. liked Very Blake, true. it's definitely the least I've hated Blake. <laughs> this is the most tolerable Blake's been, I think. This volume has been the most tolerable Blake we've had in forever. And the, like, uh, volume the, two. the interesting thing is everybody keeps saying she still needs to apologize, and the funny thing is I am one of the people that doesn't think that, because when she says, like, I'm not yeah. going to break my promise this time, like, that's basically yeah. an apology... Yeah, that's basically. So I really don't mind. Yeah. I'm glad I'm that she she's like. To say it. I'm glad that is basically admitting that she broke it last time. So I'm yeah. glad she finally did admit that. So that's good too. I like that part of the scene. Yeah. It is still shit baiting, but that line was fine. Yeah. Um, At this well, point, we'll I get into the shipping stuff later. Shit that's we'll yeah, do that yeah, after. Yeah. We'll do that after <laughs> the, the shipping shit. We yeah. do have to talk about, but that's afterwards. Uh, but but I, really this episode, like, I, I really liked this episode because like. Like, she just caught his fucking sword. We got the return of the fucking Super Saiyan hair. Like, we haven't seen that. I will that. say, that was like, a nice touch. I do like how yeah. she did... They did at least try to show that she's being... That she is being smarter than she was before. I, that's why I didn't mind that line, because... I feel like that was in reference to how she used to fight versus how she fought now, because she saved her semblance until the very end, and it worked. So I do like that's that. Fair. That makes sense to me. I, I, I just feel like it never... But the second half of this fight, once they like said their weird defiant line, it didn't feel like she was in that much danger. It didn't feel like Blake was in danger. It never really felt like Yang was in danger. It just felt like she was nervous. That's the difference. I'm glad that this, the the shaking just still seems like the PS, PTSD stuff, which I'm glad they're still showing. That. I mean, but yeah. they never felt like she was in danger of actually losing the fight. That's the problem. It just yeah, felt obvious. About the PTSD, I would have okay. basically what I'm trying to say is I would have preferred. If she still lost this fight, that's what I. That's what I mean. I'm glad, like she. You know what? I would I rather would be progress okay with, than like the triumph. I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's still good. I'm not saying it's bad. I, it just. I think it would have been better. I, I think that would have been dragging out the whole arc. A I can understand more. that. I can understand that too. Yeah. I'm not saying for sure. I just so, what I would have preferred. In my opinion, <clears throat> dude, I'll meet you in the middle. Mm -hmm. What if whatever instead of like whatever Yang caught the sword, mm -hmm. like her arm isn't broken but it's like severely damaged. Yeah, like the gun part stops working. Like I would meet you in the middle there. I yeah. feel like that would be a good trade-off. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was so like, it's like her arm is still have, messed uh, up, and then st and then Blake or, stabs uh, him in the back uh, to like yeah, like uh, make the save kind of. Like, yeah, or, that would like be better. If, uh, her other gauntlet, her, if her other gauntlet broke. <laughs> 
Uh, and so Herb, like, would both need uh, new weapons uh, going into the next volume. Yeah, like, like how, how Ember Silica. Poor Ember Silica, poor Gamble yeah. I still yeah. think <laughs> I still think Yang's weapon is one of the worst in the series. Like, I, I like mm -hmm. the idea of it, but it's not as useful as a lot of other people's weapons. So, like, now yeah. since I have you all here, I, I, so, uh, Dude and I are in the same boat where it was, we feel that it was a, uh, I feel it's a, a grave thematic mistake that he, what Blake did not take Adam's sword. No, I agree. I, 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 agree with that. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, I yeah. was, a, I was always a little iffy on that. Uh, and I, I think the... I'd be fine, I'd be fine with it, but I'd also kind of rather, like, uh, the team kind of come together and make uh, a new weapon for her. I'll, I'll put. Okay, I mean, so I'll be, here's the kicker, though. Here's so the kicker. Commission no. Ruby to make it for her. That could be cool. Here's Ruby the kicker, to help though. her design it. Yeah. Here's the kicker, though. If they had taken Adam's sword, that would have been more of a fina uh, like a finality to that. Yeah, Adam's dead. However, with them just tossing the sword away and then we don't see Adam and the sword, like we don't. Like we don't yeah. know. If, like, hmm. Nobody knows. But like, Adam's pretty fucked. No, up he's right. dead. If oh, he's, no, he's not, then yeah. that's stupid. I if would say... Okay. Robert! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, you should, okay. you usually, and Robert, I'll, I'll let you talk here in a second. Uh, okay. Usually, I'm more fine with villains coming back than heroes just because when a villain comes back, it raises the stakes. When a hero comes back, it lowers the stakes. Uh, mm -hmm. I would... The only way I would be fine with Adam coming back is, as, is if, like, Cinder fishes his body out of the river or just comes across him and he is dead and she like infects him with grim bullshit and basically mm -hmm. turns him into a freaking grimoire oh, okay you're going ruby on us okay <laughs> <laughs> you're going ruby on us i don't know it's yeah, just yeah. it's just yeah. like we've we've watched this show enough to know that like okay you know they might pull this kind of bullshit off like yeah i'm i'm thinking like i don't know so he got stabbed twice in the chest yang's like Yang's bit definitely well, went well, all the way uh, through. Yeah, yeah. Came out the other end. He fell off a cliff, smacked it, cracked his head on the way down, and fell into the ocean. So into freezing ocean water, yeah. probably. Yeah. Well, freezing, I guess, river water. That's probably gonna lead him out into the. Yeah, I was gonna say river. Least, river well, water is usually colder yeah, than ocean always, water. So. Yeah. That leads. Yeah. Or like, to, like in a bay or ocean. whatever. Like that should be pretty fucking. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still gonna hold out some hope because I do have like hope for his character. But... Well, I'm gonna say no, he's that, like here's the thing. I would, I'm gonna say I would say there's about a 99% chance that he is dead. Maybe they bring him back uh, the way media does, or uh, <laughs> maybe they do. Or I don't know. I don't know why I thought about this. Maybe it's just because I've been watching. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they do the whole Punisher thing where he comes back but with amnesia or something. I think I'm watching Punisher season two, I but I doubt if they bring him back at this point, it'd be it'd be stupid. Uh, I, I don't like. It'd Ed be stupid. It'd be it'd be stupid if he if he was brought. Writing. It would be stupid if he was brought yeah. back at this point. In I like way. how pun I like how the Punisher is currently handling it, though. That it's like yeah, but I don't know. It's uh, kind of I, an interesting I, I, take. I've but... not watched season two, so don't spoil it for me. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> and I just think <clears throat> I just think if because they made the decision to kill him, they should stick with the decision to kill him. I don't yeah. want to. No, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I just yeah. Yeah. like I said, he's. Uh, I, I, I think it's about a ninety-nine percent chance that he's dead. Especially since okay, since, since we're on the subject, um, I've gotten questions on Twitter and Discord, um, mm -hmm. talking about Cinder, and, mm -hmm. and the fake out with her death in Volume Five. And um, people are drawing comparisons Cinder between that and this. They are very different. Relevant. There, there were still things that they had to address about Cinder, uh, going forward. There is no reason to kill her off there. Um, she fell into a black void. At frozen, the by the five. way, too. Yeah, frozen. frozen. Like, and not yeah. even frozen completely solid. Like, people said, like, oh, she was frozen completely solid. No, she was coated in ice. She broke out of that, like... She was instant. not frozen in carbonite, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and as I said at the end of that season, how many times have people been frozen in anime and survive? Yeah. Almost or, all the time. No no one we all knew she wasn't found... dead. We all said yeah. she probably wasn't dead. No, no one, yeah. yeah. Not only, not only that, but like no one has ever died from falling in anime, like ever. I can't think of a single ever. character who has died from falling. <laughs> uh, That's true. And yeah. Unless they fell in love. And, and on top of that, there were things like very important plot and thematic stuff um, 
that has to be addressed and can only be addressed with Cinder continuing to be in the story. Yeah. Adam does not have that going for him. Adam was only, like the only thing that they could kind of maybe address with Adam uh, going forward if they do bring him back was maybe a his, beef um, with this Schnee, Schnee it, Dust yeah, Company. It, it, is the Shiny Dust Company, which they can easily have a whole new Faunus villain for that, or have that, or tie that in with Tyrion's deal or Tyrion's backstory because he's a Faunus. Or there's so many avenues they could go about doing that that don't require Adam. And they might yeah. not even do any of that because that whole subplot was kind of dropped after volume one. Yeah, I was going to say that whole subplot. Like, why is it not? Talk, I just, yeah. who cares anymore? Honestly, yeah. who gives a shit about that anymore? It just yeah. feels. And again, two just... swords in the tor two blades through the torso, yes. hit his head on the bottom, freezing yes. river. Yeah, I'm 99% yeah. sure that yeah. he's dead. Yeah, the, the, well, I'm going to hold on to that 1% and just like and hey go for it yeah I mean, i'm gonna hold on to it but i, I agree with only, you guys like, only, like, yeah, it's, only, a, good, it's a good place for him to die it's a good place for him to die only a set deals and absolutes yeah i don't know it's go. just yeah. as i said like as i said if we if she would have to taken the weapon uh, i, I saw like that pretends to understand that reference <laughs> <laughs> i pretend to know all references just so you know it's not just that one everyone I, knows you don't yeah. watch star wars though yeah i like jar jar i guess so no you don't no you don't you have any <laughs> do you even know anyway, that? Do you even know I, that everybody hates Jar Jar? Was that a show with Chris Rock or? <laughs> uh, so the weapon. Like, so the what, back to the weapon. I am kind of bummed at the fact that Ad, I am kind of bummed that Adam is gone, but mostly it's just because they were finally starting to do some good stuff with him again. Yeah, that was yeah, kind of my and so. Thing. Like, for that, I am kind of bummed that he's gone, and, like, if they wanted to bring him back and, you know, kind of continue making him feel more like a person again, that might be nice, but I kind of get the feeling that this is as human as he's gonna, like, yeah. this is all the humanity they had any intention of giving him, so... Actually, you know what they I can do? I don't think they're gonna do that, the, so he's the thing, the thing I can be happy about is that at least, at least he went out, like, as a character I didn't hate. Because they did a much yeah. better job with him yeah, in this really last sort of scene than they did before, so at least that's a good thing. Uh, back you to the weapon they, uh, thing. Uh, if I I was with I'm with high power that I wish that Blake had picked up his weapon, but if they do a really cool job on the redesign of Blake's weapon and they like have Ruby door, they have like the team helper with it or something like that. Then I won't care. Then I'll, then I'll be like, then I'll take that back. Oh yeah. Uh, same just here, as of I right like now, short term, I would be fine if she runs around with it in the short term. If they least. just like have her fixed back to the same weapon, I'm going to be pissed. You also, also now. when is Ren getting new yeah. weapons? Cause his weapons are still dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> they really are crap. He's, I mean, they seem He's to work out pretty well for him He's in the last about. episode. He's got but, the best weapon in but, the game. He's got but, a father's knife, dude. But, the most OP but, weapon in the game. He, the he never uses it. But it's Crow, too powerful. Crow's He's shotguns. Give his enemies a chance. Crow's shotguns were also shooting at the bat, at the at the thing, not just Ren. So you could no, argue well, that. Well, no, no. So Sock was talking about his the the father's knife for Volume Four. No, but High Power yeah. was talking about the guns because he said in last episode oh. his work his weapons yeah. were working well. Oh. Yeah. So they were doing well. They were doing well. But no, I you was, don't know that. What if it's Crow's weapons that did all the damage? Just because they both shot it doesn't mean Renz did anything. Plus, they took the armor off the back. Like anything's gonna kill, is gonna blow it up at that point. That's not evidence that Renz. Rain of Sand are... will kill it at that point. The one thing they did cool with his weapons was that he was able to climb down using them as like climbing spear knives thingies or whatever yeah. the fuck. That was the one cool thing. But he was able to tomb yeah, that doesn't mean that they're, yeah. that they're overall great weapons. Okay, like he he's, he should still have better weapons. They're not very useful. Yeah. They're really not. Um, okay, so. Actually, uh, I, I, I want to talk about. Uh, kind of explain further what I was talking about earlier with Adam not really having anything to go for him. And in order to do that, I have to talk about Bumblebee. Okay. So are we ready to talk so about that? So we're going to talk about that now? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Well, well, wait, I'm ready. Before we start this, talk about yeah. what, um, Bumblebee. Which, of of all oh. the Ruby YouTubers, who's gonna have the biggest autism spurg fest? Oh, eruption! 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 Yeah, eruption! Eruption! Fang already beat everyone to it. Which is he anti Bumblebee okay, or pro Bumblebee? He's an Adam Stan. He's an Adam Stan. Okay, so I don't. 
like calling out other Ruby YouTubers unless their videos are just completely like Adele Aka. Incompetently yeah, like Adele or um, anything. Honestly, Vex is getting into that territory uh, too. What? Barely. Well, Vex yeah. just does. Vex Vex has kind of always been like that. Vex has always been like very anti uh, ship baiting. Like he. No, he no, no. I just mean in general. Like he's his videos are only negative yeah. still, even though the show's gotten better. Uh, That's my I'd problem say, with I'd Vex say, right I'd now. Say, I'd say I'd say he's more. I'd say he's more like Fat Man, um, or or like a a, a Mauler, where um, like his, his criticisms are completely valid, but he's not the best. That's how kind of articulating why, which Fat Man has gotten a lot better at that. Yeah, like, fat, uh, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. That's the right, difference right, is Fat Man's gotten like, much better at about, that. And, and, and has, like, no, like, I'm I'm specifically talking about, like, the film language of these episodes is all over the place and often he actually, like, did edits of several uh, shots and in, in sequences um, that that cleared up the edit. And Vex did that, too. Vex did that, too, um, with um, episode four of this volume, with the, the Salem screen. Uh, I mean, keep he, in mind, like, Vex that, videos until Volume 6 are, like, I love them. Yeah. Like, his videos up yeah, until the start yeah. of Volume I, 6, I, I fucking not, adore. He, he's he's a little off base, but I wouldn't call him wrong just because his criticisms are very valid. It's just, I think yeah, they're no, a little, uh, yeah. I, think he has, I think he has the same problem as Muller where he's a little cold emotionally. Yeah, he's. That he doesn't. Get He's not a retard like like Adele. Adele's Adele's a, di stuff. a dipshit. Adele's literally uh, a dipshit. Adele's I would I wouldn't call Adele like a retard or anything, but he I is would. very mean spirited. Uh, but anyway, uh, eruption fang. Well, Adele's why wrong is, a lot of the time is, still, is the problem. Why is he still relevant? He has Jake the one man band. He what? You you cut out? Yeah. Why is he still relevant? M media cut out. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking he's, about right now. He's, he was saying something around that. He's uh, frozen Fang on my... Because, yeah, he's saying Eruption Fang is the Jack, uh, Jake one-man band of the current generation of YouTubers. Well, Jake was... Well, Jake was... Jake never should have been relevant because he never said anything intelligent. Well, he, ra he raised a good community and... No, he didn't. He raised his... a terrible community. That's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> but that's how we met. part of the met. problem. Yes. But dude, that's how we met. Yeah, but okay. does it mean the overall community was good? Yeah, but the community we made from it. Yes, okay, but he didn't raise that community. High Power did. So. You also raised it to the ground. Don't you? Yeah, I was going to say, if everybody gets credit for that, it's High Powered and media. I'm kind of sorry for it. Um, we're just going to roll. Yeah. For yeah, now, do we just need to go from here? Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't we're know just going to keep but rolling. We're but like, yeah. we're talking about uh, Bumblebee here and how. Well, well yeah, a lot of people are. I have my internet. Out there. Okay, you're back. Right, okay. You're, you're back. back. Do you want to get back on video first before you go on your rant that I'm sure is? Yeah. Uh, 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 um. Okay. So, am I back? Am I back? You're not on video yet, but you are back on uh, voice. I, 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 I don't have my camera like froze up and then my internet died. Uh. Okay. So, so, uh, eruption Fang. Why is he still relevant? He is Jake the One Man Band with better editing. Ah. He he's always he's always been Jake the One Man Band with better editing. Jake the One Man Band isn't relevant anymore. Like he doesn't make Ruby videos anymore. So, and he stopped being Eruption. relevant before he stopped. To be honest. Yeah, man, I'm I'm still trying to load up Discord like on my phone is like, I think I think it's just the phone app that died. Um, well, I can hear you right now, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're well, being recorded, I'm, I'm so on, you're I'm fine. On, yeah, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on my. Uh, I'm on a different device right now. Um, okay. And uh, that's why I'm not on camera. Oh, okay. uh, um, Just keep yeah. talking. Yeah. So, uh, like, I always kind of had my problems with Jake the One Man Man. And I always had my problems. I never liked the eruption thing. So I have no qualms with saying that uh, this dude is the is one of the people who praised Nomad of Nowhere for its subtle, subtle storytelling. So, um, <laughs> yeah, he can chomp a chode for all I care with his Adam Stanness. Um <laughs> So, and I, I get. I so, what did he do though this week? You gotta him. tell me because I don't follow him. Uh, I have no idea what he does. Uh, I only watched a part of his video that someone sent to me, mm -hmm. uh, and he basically went on this tirade about like, a, oh, they nerfed Adam again, uh, uh, and they're doing it just yeah, just no. for Bumblebee. No, and, I would disagree with both of those points. Yeah. 
and I didn't yeah. love exactly what they did, and I would still yeah. disagree with both of those. I, I had in and in order to get in order to get into this, and they had to buff. My they had to right? retcon buff the shit out of Adam to yeah. even make this scene as good as it was. What the yeah. hell is he smoking? So, so, yeah. so good timing on. That I know what I'm anyway. smoking. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I know my timing was great there. You're welcome. If somebody got to that exact point, they'd be all. Uh, uh, he's vaping. Yeah. So, so um. <laughs> Anyway. So 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 with with all this Adam and Bumblebee stuff, it's it's tiring, it's exhausting. Yeah. I compl- don't even like that. I don't even like this episode. Again, like I think it's an inferior version of last week's episode. Yeah. I think it's on par with uh, episode four of this volume, which had uh, the Salem scream, but also had Crow punching Ozpin. Like, yeah, there's yeah. stuff in it. There's stuff I really like about it. Uh, but on the whole, these last three I'd episodes say- should have been two or maybe even one yeah. episode. Uh, on, yeah. on the whole, I'd say. On the whole, I'd say this was a bad episode. Um, yep, I would agree with that. But there things I liked about this, and I am going to defend uh, the Bumblebee stuff. And right now, I'm at a point, they've done such a good job with this sequence it, throughout these last three episodes that I'm a Bumblebee shipper now. I want them to be together. <laughs> like, this, this, these last three episodes convinced me that that is a ship that can work. And it did a really good job recontextualizing a lot of stuff from earlier on. That's true. And That's a very good point. Yeah. That's a very good am, point. I don't know if I'm going to do a redox of my honest look at Yang to to get on, on this in a more well, scripted. I mean, the new, more scripted a, and a, a new shipping format. podcast and a new shipping video is definitely uh, called for after all of this. Shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I already with, have most of the script. Especially with this video. and the Renor stuff that just happened and all the Oscar baiting. I think all of that alone. Yeah. Plus, plus you. we have a <laughs> we actually have a successful. Uh, lesbian ship going on and just a successful couple being shown in general that alone whether it's hetero or lesbian or whatever that alone should be discussed yeah. because that's the only time that's really happened in the show so far yeah and you can there's at least like, three oh. things to talk about new that are completely new <laughs> much less all the other stuff from different from the last time it was discussed and so, plus, okay, so, it, so, so so this this is not the final not the final what? Did we lose him again? I think we might have lost him again. Yeah. I mean, I I had to. I mean, here's the thing. I'm it's, gonna. I'm gonna. I don't know. It's I'm hard. gonna go on the record here and say that I still prefer freezer burn and like. Yes. Mess much much. I, so. I like like I don't know. We I, stand freezer burn in this Discord. Damn it. It's. No, no. But like like I don't know. Bumblebee like at this point still kind of bores me. But like what I do agree that what they've done here is like this is the most I this is the closest I've come to liking Bumblebee in a long yeah. time. So like this is like this has been good and if so if they decided to go with Bumblebee Can't from respect. here and so keep you know having what they did, quality, they my response it. would be okay. Okay. Well I like the thematic thing about uh, with Bumblebee, yeah. I like the thematics of it. Was you know, you've got people are like people keep for some reason, people keep equating Yang to the Beast. It's like, no, that's not how Red Like Roses Part One goes, guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, okay. It's, it's very, so, no, the thing with the thing with it is, it's very thematic. You've got the Cursed Rose, which is Adam, and then you've got Beauty and the Beast. It's like you've got that whole dynamic thing going on. All right. Once, now, once now the that, rose now, is gone, yeah. it's like it works thematically. My, yeah. Now that I have my camera back, I'm gonna rewind all the way to Volume Two. Okay. And this is not the this is not the final version of this rant. I'm going to do a much more scripted and rehearsed version of this sometime in the off season. I don't know if it's going to be like an honest look at Yang Redux or if it's going to be like an honest look at Bumblebee. Like maybe just an honest look at that couple, like a full ten minute video uh, dissecting that ship. Um, I and, think Bumblebee's probably um, better. Uh, so all the way back in Volume Two, the first real significant moment Yang and Blake had together was uh, in burning the candle, which is one of my favorite scenes. It's yeah. my favorite episode. It's what got me into the series. Isn't that what started and Bumblebee it, basically too? Like what really uh, kicked... it, No. It's it, it, not no? what started it. That's what got <laughs> me into Bumblebee. Um, okay. But Bumblebee, Bumblebee had always been a thing since uh, Yang's introduction because there was a, a theory really early on that the person Yang was looking for in that trailer was Blake. That's because of the random image. Though, yeah, of, yeah, of yeah, the, the, black yeah, the person, random, so. yeah, the random image that Monty chose for that scene that was actually supposed to be Raven. But we didn't know that because we hadn't gotten into that yet until Volume 2. we had no idea um, who Raven was. Yeah. yeah. He's like, or that she would be in Yang, or why Ruby and Yang were half-sisters. Yeah, so... 
in that moment, Yang opens up to Blake about all mm -hmm. of her baggage that she had gone through as a kid in order to try to convince Blake to learn the same lesson Yang had to the hard way. Um, yeah. And then Blake never really returns the favor. Uh, yeah, because that that requires like a lot of trust on Yang's part. Mm -hmm. That I feel like that's something she doesn't tell just anybody. Like of the characters we know, she's obviously told like her family. Uh, she's probably told. Uh, she probably told Weiss that as well. Uh, obviously by this. Point, Apparently by, she by, told I John. Mean, like, I mean, like even by Volume Three, she probably yeah. told Weiss and probably told uh, Team Juniper. Um, yeah. Or or Ruby told them that, which. It doesn't matter if she was the one who told her or if Yang was probably the one. Probably not even that. Probably, not um, even, probably hasn't even said it either. Yeah. Well, no, no, because Jean, Jean knew who Raven was at the. Yeah. Volume In Volume Five, five Jean knew. So he, so yeah. he at yeah. least knew. Fair so enough. he at least knew that much. Even if he didn't know like the whole story of like Yang nearly getting Ruby killed, um, he at least knew that they didn't have the same. That mom. they were half. Yeah, that they were half yeah. sisters, and that her mom was, and that Yang had yeah. an absentee mom. Yeah. 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 Uh. Blake never opened up to Yang on that same level. When she left mm -hmm. in Volume 3, it wasn't that she left, and I think a lot of us kind of mistook the intent. Uh, now, whether this was the original intent or if they, like, gone back and, and kind of retconned the intent uh, with mm -hmm. these episodes or with this volume, but it wasn't so much that she left, and it wasn't so much that she left Yang when Yang needed someone to rely on. It was that she left without saying a word. Yeah. And the fact that Yang Which was also what annoyed the crap yeah. out of the fandom. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. What, annoyed, it's what made us start it's really starting to hate her. That was the moment people really started to hate Blake. Yeah. 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 She didn't even... Like, Yang pours her heart out to this girl about, like, mm -hmm. all this emotional baggage that she had been dealing with, being a mom to Ruby, nearly getting her killed at a very young age having to be saved by Crow, trying to find answers about Raven, Summer dying, like, all that stuff. And Blake doesn't even bother to tell her that she has a family, a rich family in Menagerie. Yeah. Like, that. that's... that's yeah. That is a break of trust. That is a break of, like, the sisterhood that teams are kind of built around. That is a, that is a break in their trust of friendship. Um, because, you know, Weiss was honest. With, with her team, yeah, like Ruby knew about when she got taken by, when, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, when she took her, when she was taken away by her dad, Yang knew. Yeah, Yang already knew that she was the one who had to tell Ruby that because Ruby was unconscious when all that stuff was going on. Yeah. Um. Like Jean, knew, like they all knew all that stuff with Weiss. They didn't know about Blake though, and mm -hmm. Blake ran. Which uh, is why when I saw her parents in the trailer, I'm like, yeah. she should not have parents yeah by the way yeah. i was right about that can i just point out three or four years later <laughs> i got so much shit. i got no, so no. much shit from people like saying like well, this is fine that she has parents no it wasn't fine that she had parents gear and callie are great gear and callie are great the illusion of her yeah gear and callie are great but they they shouldn't have existed based on the blake character that we got and what she didn't tell everybody yeah. Sorry, yeah, I, had to, so, of, yeah. I had to interrupt for that because that's important. Yeah. Go ahead. And so in Volume 4, she's dealing with her trauma. We've already – we we did podcasts on this. So they did a really good job portraying PTSD, uh, even if it was kind of a Cliff Notes version of it because Yang didn't get a whole lot of screen time. Yeah. She got shots really, the screen But time. some people will still say they didn't do a good job of it, but I, I we all know they did actually the, do a pretty people, good job. People who, uh, people who have actually – uh, again, like – a lot of people say claim to suffer from PTSD, but if they're on Tumblr, they're probably lying. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's sick true. Bird. Sick and not, bird. not only that, but like I, I've taken psychology classes. I've read child development tech. I I have a child development textbook somewhat not here. It's at my dad's, but I do have a child development uh, textbook that I've read front to back. Uh, and, and you know, same thing with uh, Kitty Kirishima. She's in the same kind of general field that I am. Uh, child psychology and stuff and she tutors kids and deals with kids who deal with emotional trauma and stuff and I, I'll trust those people's opinions over people like Adele Aka who just kind of talks out his ass um, kinda <laughs> I'm trying to be nice okay? no He's no not. you don't need to <laughs> um, and so 
yeah, I'll take their word over it. Um, and then in Volume 5, as Yang is, like, reuniting, and, God, I... Say what you want about Volume 5. It was not the worst thing ever. It was really bad. It was, like, a 4 out of 10, though. Okay. Like, for, if we're talking so, at a 10-point scale, I, Volume 5 was maybe a 3 or a 4. I was going to say, I I'd have put seen it, worse things. I'd give it a 3. It has its moments, but it was pretty bad. I mean, yeah. It was the worst yes. part of the show. It see, was the worst season, part of this show. See, in fairness, season four of SpongeBob and Beyond is worse than than Volume Five of Ruby. Uh, so sex swing. I have a ten scale. Worse than Volume Five. Oh, sex swing is uh, a no one out of ten. Wrong. Sex swing is a no, one out of ten. Yeah. Nomad Zero. of Nowhere is worse than Volume Five. Red versus Blue season eleven is worse than Volume Five. Um. What else? Uh, season 14, and I would say uh, season 16 of Red vs. Blue. I haven't seen season 16. I'm just going off Same what people me. have told me. Is, wor is worse than uh, Ruby Volume 5. Uh, mm. There there are things that Rooster Keith has done. Everything after Vo season 1 of The Walking Dead is probably worse than, is worse than Volume 5, too. Ooh. Yeah. I I would say five, everything uh, season uh, everything after bad. season 3. Okay. I would give Volume uh, 5 like I a good... Yeah. I didn't watch I, later like versions of Walking Dead are worse than Volume Five though, yeah. Yeah, I give so, Volume Five like a good five, but like because I, I keep hearing about it. I'm not sure when it for the Walking people. Dead started to bore me, but it, it got pretty bad. But yeah. Yeah. So uh, so I was Sword Art Online is worse than Volume Five. Mmm, debatable. No, uh, debatable. <laughs> season, one, season, uh, season one is season one. Um, season two has the Mother's Rosario arc, which is actually like really freaking good. Um, okay, that's fair. Uh, but uh the scene where Ruby and Yang reunites and Ruby has like her emotional breakdown because she she realized she fucked up. Yeah, she, she should not she should not have left Yang. She should have stayed there and waited for Yang to recover and they should have gone in together. Uh yeah. she, was, she was way too she I was, was going to say I'm with hard. Robert. I don't know if I agree with that, but okay. Uh in, in her mind, it's better storytelling that it happened the way it happened. Yeah. But in her mind, she's like, "Oh my god, I I needed my big. Yeah, sister. I can understand that. Okay, I can understand I, she, that. She okay, needed, she needed I big. needed my um, own H hand. I so in, in overall, she did the right thing, but I get yeah, what you're saying, media. She did the she did the narratively interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, I would also argue and, that, like, in terms no, of yeah, I don't know, in terms of what she could act, what yeah. she could do in that situation, as far as. Yeah, I, I, sure I, I think she did. The, think she did the actual right thing. It just wasn't the right thing for Yang, so she feels bad. But like, yeah. not just thematically, but overall, like for saving the world or like doing what she think her thinks her duty is, she has more of a duty to all of humanity than she does to just her sister. Yeah. So I understand yeah. why and she and feels and bad I, though. Think, yeah, but I, but I overall, she did the I right think, thing. Yeah, yeah, I understand I why she felt like she needed to defend herself. I think we talked about this years ago on the podcast but like the 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 prospect of like what if Tyrion just rolled into patch looking for ruby oh yeah, yeah. I, remember. I remember that that, yes, that, remember. that would that would, have, that would have definitely happened had uh ruby stayed uh with yang yeah um, that definitely would have been a plot point and if then yang would be dead and, and yang would be dead up. if yeah. that happened so yeah, yeah. ty would probably be and dead yeah and ty and would then... probably be dead too which actually i'd be fine with because <laughs> i don't really care about ty much but Aww. Yeah. So, oh so I'm not so saying I want it. I just wouldn't care. So, okay, ca so carrying on, uh, Weiss, I think is the one. If I'm remembering correctly, might have been Ruby. Kind of forces uh, Yang to uh, think about Blake and think about like the trauma that she experienced because she lost Be her arm trying to save Weiss. Blake. She, she because she, Weiss is the best character in the fucking yeah. show. And, yeah. and so she she's kind of forced to kind of confront those emotions. Uh, but because she never encounters Adam at the Battle of Haven, which I think was kind of a misstep. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a whoopsie. One of, one of the many, many whoopsies. One of many big oofs <laughs> in the Volume 5 finale. Um, That's a very... You uh, are being very generous. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you're being really... <laughs> like, she, like, she wasn't... Like, she never had time to actually, like, deal with her, with her complex feelings of anguish and betrayal that, that Blake had dealt her. Mm -hmm. And then Blake, throughout this volume, does not fucking help. She just makes it worse. She makes, she tries coddling Yang. She mm -hmm. tries babying her, which is just something. But I'm glad they that did that. I'm glad they at least book. showed that she's fucking up by trying, at least. That was one thing yeah. I yeah. liked mm -hmm. about this volume. What I didn't like was that yeah. it seemed obvious that Yang was going to forgive her. But I did like... For once, I was happy with Blake because I liked they showed that she was trying to do something, but she was doing the wrong thing. 
I like and yeah. I like how the show knew she was doing the wrong thing. That I really appreciated. Yeah, I yeah, think you yeah. mentioned that before, dude. I think uh, that's what you wanted to, to happen. It's like for her to try yeah. and like, mm-hmm. yeah, because you didn't want you didn't want the yeah. you didn't want the uh, apology to happen like so easily. Like you yeah, wanted it, some it, kind it, of disparagement. Yeah, overall it, it, that like, worked out well. And, and yeah. Blake and Yang working together in this fight uh, is the proof that Blake has kind of learned her lesson on her own. By the way, without have, needing a confrontation, mm-hmm. she. Which is, you know, that's that's good character writing, guys. <laughs> um, you you know who you are if you're watching this. Um, <laughs> and it it's because they're. I, I said this in my review. This is the first time that they've treated each other as equals in their entire life. Yeah. This is this yeah. is the moment for Blake that she <laughs> never did in Volume Two. This is her like, this is what I'm dealing with. Adam is like the manifestation of both of their traumas. He was abusive towards Blake. We can, I don't know if we're going to talk about like the retcons that they did with Adam. I'm pretty sure we kind of <laughs> nailed that in the head last mm-hmm. volume when we were talking about Ilya. Um, and he's also like the one who's responsible for like Yang's PTSD, which he does deal with. People don't understand how PTSD works and they also don't understand how fight or flight works. Like she's shaking. And when Adam comes at her, she has two. The the human response is one of two things: run or fight. And Yang is a fighter; she always has been. Yang or Adam attacking her is better for her than him taunting her. Like you, you health health wise. Just because she's like, scared like health, doesn't mean she has to be crippled Adam's by words, that fear. Yeah, yeah. yeah people do. People do with it in different ways. Yeah, health wise and just psychologically. Uh, and this is like a real thing w- with with mental health. Adam's words are actually doing more damage than his sword. Like when he says, "Like uh, moment of truth, Yang, are you fast?" I still me? think a lot of it. Or, or when he was talking about like, stupid, uh, but... or, "Or or or are you trying to act tough so that you don't have to die for her?" Uh, is what he said last week. Like th- those are actually like more triggering for her yeah. than than him actually swinging his sword. Because you've got people who different. I did like that line. I did like that line of uh, I don't know. You sure? Like or something? It was something like, "Oh, you expect her to keep her promises? Well, guess what promises she made to me." I like that one. I didn't like Yang's response though, of like, "Oh, then she found out who you really were." It's all like. And and again, for for everyone who is uh, bitching about them, like betraying Monty's vision, those parallels between Yang and Adam were drawn all the way back in Volume Three at the at the latest. Can I also just point out that so far the three best volumes happened without Monty. Volume three had some Monty, but he wasn't actually he yeah. didn't make most of it. Volume four is probably as of right now still the best volume. Unfortunately, volume six is kind of it's not. I don't. Think it, had it's, it had its chance. It, it had its. Still, no, no, it, still, it still has a chance. I think. It still has a chance. If I'm the, saying. If next it, episode. If, if next, next episode, episode is, is amazing. Cool. I don't think it will be, but um, if it is, I, I, it can I, still be better. In my, opinion, in my opinion, if next episode is good, I'll put it above Volume Four. It could be. If no, I, I'm like saying next week's episode, it's I'll been, put it above Volume Four. It's you guys might not. You guys, you guys are completely entitled to your own opinions and your own rankings. <laughs> but for like what I value as a cinephile, as someone who loves movies and loves the art of effort, that that I already know what my Volume Six tagline is going to be when I do my overall uh, retrospective on this volume. The art of effort. Yeah, um, that's good. I like that because that is true. They did. You can very clearly yeah. tell that they put a lot more effort in this volume. That's why. They're trying. They're I trying think the, so that's why hard. we can have. That's they're, a, they're really giving it their. Yeah. That's the difference. That's the big thing with this volume is, especially if the last episode, the last episode just has to be good. It doesn't have to be amazing. It doesn't have to be yeah. perfect. If it's yeah, good there's not, and it, there's and not it puts. Single... It, it, if it's good and it wraps everything up in a reasonably neat way for like the next arc to start, then, then that's good. That's really all that we need. Either, either way, this is, is the volume be... that so far is the furthest removed from Monty, and it's either the best or second best volume. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Uh, so here's... you gotta shut up with the rooting Monty's vision. Monty's a, a solid animator, and he does come up with very cool ideas. He does have a very good sense of visual flair, as shown by his own personal style. Like, dude was fucking stylish. Like, yeah. he had his own look, and he rocked it. 
and that very much made its way into Ruby. Like, Monty looked like an edgelord, but like a really cool edgelord. And I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> like, he looked he, unique. He really looked, he, like, he really he, looked like a Final Fantasy character. Yeah, good Final he Fantasy looked character. like a badass, cool-looking Final Fantasy character. And I'm and I don't mean that as an insult. I mean that as a compliment to him. He had his own sense too. of style, and he that's pulled why, it why, off. He pulled it off like a boss, and that's something that he injected into Ruby. Does the look of the characters and the 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 weapons and the world and all of that stuff he did an amazing job on. But I don't think that his I that his like storytelling was his biggest strength. So no, it's no, not at all. You yeah. guys got you can't just keep you know glorifying everything where it's like the well, ruining Monty's vision. Yeah, Miles and Carrie aren't perfect, but also and I, they're I know getting I said this, last this week. volume has proved that when they actually yeah. give a shit and they actually try, they have some ability and they have some talent, and that's great to see, honestly. Yeah, yeah. and I, and I know that I said this last week because that was when uh, the whole you're ruining Monty's vision started with with all the bumblebee shit. Um, fuck you guys. You go. You don't know what Monty's vision was. The only the only people who have a good idea what Monty's vision are is or was is Miles, Carrie, and Gray. Miles and Carrie because they're the only ones who attended those IHOP meetings. Those yep. notorious those, IHOP uh, meetings. Those ketchup IHOP with meetings. the ketchup and shit. Yeah, well, with mm-hmm. the ketchup maps and, and stuff. Maybe Patrick and Mahomes Gray, was there. Who had to... Sorry yeah, for anybody who gets that yeah. reference. Catch Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. Adores ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> For you guys, uh, anybody who gets that, yeah, that's yeah, why I had to I, mention. I, I, I also I love it. ketchup. That's why I had to say that. Yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in Missouri. I'm a Chiefs fan. Um, my sister's a really huge Chiefs fan. She lives. She Wait, you guys don't even have the Rams either. anymore. You guys gave us the Rams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, thank but, you. By the way, I appreciate that. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> they're my second um, team now, and they're better than the Jets. So woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean the Chiefs aren't bad The Chiefs are also really good So you can't really complain too much yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the other guy and the other guy who would know Monty's vision is Gray Who was, may I remind you Monty's boss yeah. He was the one in charge of Monty He was the Rick McCallum To Monty's George Lucas So here's the thing <laughs> I mean, Not to mention, like, you're talking about a guy who who like like, like, you know, like we've all seen like his little earlier works and stuff like that. He literally did a black and yellow thing with Blake and Joe. Yeah, like he was already so, doing the shipping himself. So here's my personal opinion. Whenever it comes to like all the whole like Monty's vision and stuff, so and, and just Monty in general. So in my humble opinion, I've I've said this before and I'll say it again. Monty is a superb animator. Uh, I feel that definitely what Monty also was was he was a good pitch man. Because oh, yeah. he had to sell this idea to Rooster Teeth. Yep. He had to Mon- come with that idea, and he had to sell it. Like, he probably spent, like, a few months working on those trailers and showed the trailers off or showed a trailer off to them, and then they're like, yeah, this is, like, yeah, this yeah, is a uh, prototype. He showed off the red trailer to Bernie. Here's, here's, yeah. here's one thing about Monty. Monty, it, what, you know, criticisms, compliments, whatever. Monty was cool as fuck. Yeah. He had his own style. He yeah. had his own flair. He made he made cool things. Like his videos were cool. That's what he did. He was a cool fucking guy. Okay. He looked cool. He was he looked like a he looked like a Final Fantasy character that most like Texans would probably say he looked gay. But he wouldn't give he a shit. But <laughs> but he wouldn't give a shit if they did call him that. That's exactly why Monty was cool as shit. Co- talked calmly, spoke softly, and carried a big stick. That's what Monty was, right? So if he told me anything. I would probably want him to make it. I would probably give him the money to make it right on the spot. So yeah, like I said, in terms of like a pitch man and stuff like that, he probably was a great pitch man. Like, of course, that's why you know. He, so of course, I, Ruby I got like... greenlit because of him. How could it not? You know. So <laughs> let's let's kind of wrap up this whole like discussion of the shipping and. Well, no, we can't wrap it up. I still have a shitload to say about the shipping. Sorry, <laughs> we haven't even. We need to get. Uh, we we get. Yeah. We, let's, Let's just be mindful. We still have another half of the episode to talk about. And then, There's yeah. like zero yeah. things to say about the half of the episode. It was boring okay. and predictable, and Cordovan sucks. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So, Done. So, so uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to talk about uh, the, the parallels that because I, I mentioned this a few minutes ago. Wait, are we still on the shipping part? Because I, par- I still have Yeah, the, the, yeah okay. the, the, okay, the, the parallels between Yang and Adam were drawn very explicitly in Volume Three. When Blake was scared that Yang was going down the same road as Adam, and that scene sucks, 
because Yank didn't actually apologize for her actions and Blake forgave her anyway. But you know th that's what they were trying and yeah. whatever. It, it, they they drew those parallels. So when Adam is like, "What does she even see in you?" What Blake sees is the person Adam was pretending to be, and that's another thing. This volume did a really good job recontextualizing Adam to to rectify the Adam we got in volume four and five with the Adam we got in, in hints and dialogue pieces in the first three volumes. Um, Adam was always a douchebag, but he was a douchebag mm. with a cause who was very charismatic, who was able to convince people that he was righteous and just when really he just wanted to murder people. Yeah. Douchebag isn't always That's a bad thing. Um, Ironheart's a douche... Or Iron... Iron... Iron Wood. Sorry, Iron Iron, Wood. Iron Heart is a denim brand, and I'm really into, like, denim and clothes. Uh, Iron, so no, Iron Heart confusing. is a really shitty Marvel character. Iron Wood oh, is God. a... Iron Wood is a douchebag, but he's still, like, as of right now, as far as we can tell, is still a good guy. So it wasn't necessarily a bad thing that that Adam was always a douchebag. So... I, st I still think they should have had it... I don't know. Had to be more of he became like something he became than he was always. Oh a no, joke. I agree. I they they no no no. They went too far. Like I said, there's a difference between douchebag and like evil sack of shit that they try to turn him into later on. Like he wasn't always an evil sack of yeah. shit. He was always a douchebag. There's a difference between the two things. Okay, I guess. Yeah. That's well, so. the thing the, the thing is, people have an issue with is like, well, if he has an issue with the STD, why do you just go after the schnees? It's like. He got on a power trip. He was all like, yeah, I'm going to be the head of the white thing. I'm going to get all this power. I'm going to get all this responsibility. I'm going to have, I'm going to great gather an army to do what I want to do for this. Yeah. So as far as, the, as far as the shipping goes, I've been complaining about the ship baiting recently, but there's yeah. a caveat. Mm -hmm. There's a caveat to that because okay, for those who don't already know, and if you've watched any of the podcasts, you know, I am, originally a bumble well not originally originally but like i've been a bumblebee shipper for quite a long time especially since volume three came out i've been a bumblebee shipper obviously renor is still the otp but still a bumblebee shipper and um but i'm not the kind of bumblebee shipper that's like oh uh, anything that happens with black sun i like try to deny or i hate i was no. fine with what well, looks like fine. the thing the reason so the in if it was if they end up like confirming Bumblebee, or they at least address the fact that they have been teasing both Bumblebee and Black Sun sometime soon within like the next two volumes. I'm hoping next volume, honestly. Or, you know, volume seven or eight. Honestly, they have to do it by one of those two volumes. They at least address that they've been teasing or whatever, they've been developing both Black Sun and Bumblebee then I'm fine with what happened in these last couple episodes because I agree with media that like as a Bumblebee shipper like it makes me happy because it is moving closer to that this is like the most shippy that ship has ever actually been which is with these last few episodes like this is the most this is the closest they've ever gotten to like as I said this is the first time they're actually treating each other like equals all the parallels and shit and, th and thematic things that they're doing definitely make this seem like bumblebees going forward especially after they very clearly blue balled sun in the beginning of the volume i'm sorry to all the black sun shippers but even in the beginning of this volume i told i said that is not confirming the ship a kiss on the cheek and sun acting like he isn't trying yeah. to get in blake's pants he literally <laughs> said it wasn't about that that is his quote it was never about that I think I think I think it was it was never about that dude or it was never about that man or something like that because that's of course how yeah. Sun would talk but that very the, the clearly that's like leaked out of Sun that, is, <laughs> that very clearly showed that they were not done with Bumblebee at that point that was obvious and I'm sorry all the Black Sun shippers that thought the ship was confirmed by that are idiots because. And I'm not saying you're an idiot for shipping Black Sun. I'm saying you're an idiot for thinking that that kiss on the cheek and that dialogue afterwards confirmed the ship. Because I'm the person sitting here after Renora says, you get the fuck back here with my man. I still don't say Renora's confirmed. And that is like, y'all don't even know how much of a Renora shipper I am, okay? Renora <laughs> is my OTP, period. Even over, like, Harry and Ginny, 
over Aang and Katara over like anything, okay? I was always a Harry Hermione guy. Myself. No, no, I never saw that personally. But either way, whatever. Either <laughs> I there's other ships I probably can I could talk about too. I just those are the ones that come off the top of my head. Um, uh, what's the one? Robin in uh, Robin in Starfire. You know that kind of stuff. Renora. Oh, that one always ends in a hot mess. Is Robin in Starfire? Renora is the OTP. Okay, and I still don't consider Renora confirmed right now. So that's just give me perspective on what my perspective is so hmm. i think that is setting up that they're go- they obviously were going to do bumblebee stuff and of course they did they've been doing a little bit of bumblebee hinting this whole time and then it really came to a head with all this stuff recently now of course i'm not going to be one of those bumblebee shippers that says oh my god all the bumblebee stuff it's going to happen it's going to happen we don't know what no, i don't, what don't, i need really them know. to do at this point is to stop just doing all these things separately and actually address this that's if they address it in some way even they don't have to like literally say it but if they show blake like thinking about like in some way like yang or blake or like they show her like having feelings for maybe both of them or something i'd honestly even be be fine i'd even be fine with a um hair mending no no i don't think it's gonna happen a love triangle and i usually Uh. hate love triangles but i think they've actually done a decent job with and I, as long as it doesn't go on too long if it only goes on if it goes on yeah. for one volume i'm fine with it. if it goes on for two i'll start hating it one volume so, is fine uh, you, the thing is the thing is it's fine it's because they've, they've done a decent job setting both of these up i liked the stuff they do with black sun if they had confirmed volume uh black sun at the end of last volume or the beginning of this volume i would have been fine even as a bumblebee shipper fine with it because they did a good job with it it's one of the few things they did well in both volumes four and five well volume four was good but the few things they did well with blake in both volumes was the black sun stuff i enjoyed it it was good even though i'm a bumblebee shipper if they had confirmed it i'd been fine with it the reason i complain about the shipping is because they they just keep going back and forth pick one or address that there's conflict that's my main point here so i I think something i'd like to add to what dude is bringing is um I think the main problem that they're gonna have to, which they're they're gonna have to figure it out uh, sooner rather than later. They're gonna later piss a lot and... of people off eventually. Either way, I hope they at least decide to make a decision and just piss half those people off now rather than wait until the end of the show when everybody's gonna be pissed off because yeah, then it's dumb. Yeah. I mean, you've already you've already got what, people like let let Tyler finish his thing first. So what what I want to say is they have this pot on the stove of like the shipping status of Yang and Blake. Mm-hmm. And that pot on the stove is full of water since volume one. It's been sitting on simmer since volume one. They're running out of water in that pot. And whenever the water all simmers away, bad things happen. So yeah. they, either need to pour, they either need to throw some spaghetti or some ramen noodles in that water or something like something for the sense. audience. Or like start hard boiling some eggs. Like they, they need to do something. Like they could they could just throw us a bone. They could throw us a bone. That's all that the that's all that we need. Like they could either the love triangle, black sun, bumblebee, it, it, whatever. It doesn't matter. We just need something. They need to be. It, this, yeah, that's very well said. I completely agree with you. Uh, it's a great analogy, actually. I think that, and this goes back to what I said last. I think it was last week, or maybe it was the week before. When was the Nora line? Was it last week? Or was it the week before? Last week. It was last yeah, week. That was last so week. that was my last. With my man. Yeah, that was my last big ship. Should be great. It's like the same thing with Renora. You need to be much. Again, you need be to bold. be bold. You need to be more bold with this stuff, guys. Like, you've Fair done it. Do you've done do actually. It. Here's the thing: these relationships they've built up, they've done a solid job with all of them. As much as like the 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 Bumblebee and, and Black Sun shippers will try to tell say that. They did a shitty job with the other competing ship. They haven't, honestly. I think they've done a solid job with both of them. They've done more with Black Sun, but especially with these last few episodes, these did a great thing. These were good for Bumblebee. They honestly were, okay? And they were done well. This was the best part of this this part of the volume, and it's uh, this, this sequence was good. But you need to stop baiting. You need to pick something or at least address it. And the same thing with Renora. You need to confirm Renora for fuck's sake. 
<laughs> Everybody knows, yes, like, please. there's literally no downside. Like, you're only pissing people off. And by not... You're stupid. Yeah. And by not... <laughs> by not at least addressing the, ish, the, the... You know, the romance with Blake in one way or the other, or both. You know, try to con- have the conflict. You're also just only pissing people off. As somebody oh, who is fine with yes, any, yeah. I'm annoyed. Yeah, like- and if they had been more... Con- if they could confirm more stuff... I wouldn't be calling this baiting right now. That's the problem. Well, yeah. I wouldn't have to the call this baiting. If, that's the only reason I'm calling it baiting. It's good stuff for Bumblebee. But because of the way they just keep teasing all the stuff back and forth and they never really address anything, I have to call it baiting. And I don't want to. Yeah. That's that's which, the issue. And that's why we have all saying, this bullshit blowing up with the fandom and why it's hard to blame the fandom itself. Because yeah, there's obviously there's overreactions on both sides. Like and again, the Black Sun fandom is proving that as judgmental as they've, it's I actually kind of feels good because as ju- they, I only get judged for being a Bumblebee shipper, even though I yeah, they call you toxic. They call even you though I've been yeah, even though I've proven time and time again that I am not that kind of Bumblebee shipper that hates Black Sun. I was fine with it being confirmed. Yeah, if it was yeah well, I think we're all. Fine I'm with still fine Black if it Sun. gets confirmed. Just pick one. But the point yeah, is like. One. The black the Black Sun fandom has proven that they are every bit as toxic and evil and horrible as the Bumblebee fandom. And stupid. you've got people you've got people making petitions to forcibly change Miles and Carrie's minds. Yeah, and they're trying to get say they're they're like they're spamming because, everywhere. Like they, what they do sign is, this. We'll force them to change this ship. What it's they, not going to happen. Blah, blah. What they don't understand is that this scene, these scenes recently, are good even if they're platonic. That's what's yeah. great about them. Yeah, they just might, even, they might even be. They might even be better because it will actually be a healthier relationship if it if it goes from this to being platonic like sisterhood friendship. Um, if it goes straight into this to romance, that's a little unhealthy way to start uh, a romance. Agreed. But, uh, I yeah. really, really like the scene where Blake and Yang are constantly each other because Blake literally just pulled a Kylo Ren and killed her past. Yeah. And <laughs> and she she breaks down yeah. and Yang yeah. you know like d- it becomes the bigger person uh, and um, and holds her like consoles her and tells her it's going to be alright tells her the things that Blake maybe probably should have told her after volume 3 mm. um, and it's just you know it's it's really sweet and it's not inherently romantic. Uh, you can take no, it that not. way. I'd like, like again, like these these last three, the Adam stuff in these last three episodes has been so good that like I am actually kind of shipping Bumblebee now. And I was a hardcore Black Sun shipper. Uh, yeah, I, so I that's, did, that says I did, something. Yeah. That really says something, honestly. Yeah. It's just somatically okay, good. I would, I would yeah. call myself. Maybe hardcore is not the right word. Yeah, I don't. I would never call you a hardcore yeah. Bumblebee. I, I, uh, I don't. Black I don't give a. I don't. I don't give enough of a fuck about Blake to really hardcore shipper with anyone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just say deeply interested. Deeply interested. Yeah. Or yeah. I interested. really. I really like what I. Like I said last week, I'm. I really like what they're doing with this. I really do. Yeah. I think I, you're, I, I think, or you're a moderate uh, bumblebee like, shipper. I, I get you stand in the audience while the uh, while the black sun shippers are being thrown off the uh, fifth story roof of a building. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think the thing is Saudi Arabia style. I, I get your Oof. point about it kind of starting off unhealthy, but one of my points is and why there's a lot of people who are also just anti shipping in general, which I those are my least favorite people. I would take a rabid shipper over an anti-shipper any day of the week. And I, I can't stand the people that say shippers ruin everything. Because here's the thing. Shipping just means, like, to me, all shipping is is just, like, enjoying relationships in shows or fiction, okay? Yeah. Relationships are literally, like, they're the most important part of life, okay? <laughs> that So say, putting a lot of, of effort or, like, care into that is not dumb. If you're like that anti-shipping, then you must have something else wrong with your life or something. Um, spoiler yeah. alert: I'm a practicing Catholic. Uh, I actually went and I play drums at my church. That's my part, one of my jobs. And uh, we had a really, really good homily this weekend. Even if you're not religious, you could get something out of this. Basically, what the guy said yes. is that the the what a marriage is is like essentially like the this is like their bridge version is a marriage is a like the ultimate friendship. That is, and he's right. That to me, I completely, I like, I like that. completely I like that. agree with that. 
You have to be best I friends. I friended you so hard, I put a baby in you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeet>. <laughs> but it's true. Uh... Your, your relation, if you are, what your romantic relationship has to be, whoever your partner is, your wife, whatever, again, Catholic, but if, you know, gay, whatever, I don't care. I, I like relationships in general, romantic relationships in general. If whatever your partner, wife, whatever, husband, whatever is, they ha- they should be your best friend, Okay. And I completely agree with that. You know, my fiance is my best friend. Yeah. So the thing is, when people say like... My right hand is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> when people say... when So whenever people say like, why can't they just be friends? I always find issue with that. If... Because a, a romantic relationship is just a higher level... Is in many ways a higher level of friendship. So I don't yeah. dislike the, sh- the shipping wars. And that's why I say that when people are like really adamant and they blow up about these things i can't entirely blame i can't entirely blame the fandom i think i killed sock yeah i think you did i can't blame the fandom because they are kind of getting teased by the writers so it's not entirely their fault and i understand why they care there is good reason to care about relationships nothing matters more to most people than romance even if they don't want to admit it that is what like I mean, we're literally wired yet. we're literally wired to fuck each other to procreate okay so telling <laughs> so when people say like it doesn't have to be a relationship like look, i've literally had a couple people tell me like it'd be better for ren and nora just remain friends what what do you mean just no. friends well the thing is that like, is the dumbest thing the ever line. there's nothing more of a friendship than a romantic relationship as long as the people are attracted to each other like, like, as you're saying, it's like, like, even if you just mildly like something, like, like you said, like, if someone just, like, mildly likes Renor or something like that, if someone attacks that, like, wh- if you only mildly like it, why are you getting so hurt about it? It's like, it's, it's because of, like, what you like, it's what you love, and then when people attack it like that, it's just like, what, what's yeah. wrong with you? Why don't you have, like, did you have something to invest in yourself? Like, why are you attacking yeah. this? Yeah, so why, I, yeah. I understand why, like, so the thing is, like, I said, you know, yeah, the Black Sun fandom proved they're every bit as bad as the Bumblebee fandom. But my, I, I also have sympathy for the Black Sun fandom, so I'm not just attacking you guys. Because I understand why they're upset. Some of the stuff that I've seen is way is not des- is too far I, and I, I, shows that they're hypocrites I even about. Have my doubts that I, I even well, I even have my doubts that a lot of the more voracious of the attacks are actually coming from Black Sun shippers. It I might not be. I think it's coming from anti shippers in general. Maybe or it, or it's actually um, no, it's actually coming from um just anti LGBT crowds. Uh, and I don't want to yeah. get into this because this isn't the Genlock podcast, but like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be like the most quotable podcast. I swear. This is this, kind of, this is a oh, great you. This is a great podcast this Dash week. Has I have been to say influence on me the last couple of days so um, actually oh, thank you dashi thank you i i no, really th- hope th- thank you high school dxd in general um <laughs> because I, it's, it's not just her i've been watching it with blame fallen red as well um oh yeah bl- just blame the tundra blame the just the tundra in general because i've been hanging out with those guys a lot um the tundra so, gave so, me hemorrhoids oh, <laughs> so so Fucking damn it! Uh, so like, I, I have I have proof in, in my comment section uh, for last week's review, and not to a lesser extent last week's podcast, where there are people, and I, I get it because I, I've been there. Like, I watch my honest look at the White Fang. <laughs> it's one of the best videos I've ever made, and I did not pull any goddamn punches in that video. That's probably why it's one <laughs> so, of your like, best videos. I'm not a liberal chill. I'm like the exact opposite of that but oh, yeah you're you're missing the forest for the trees or however that expression goes no i think that's right uh you're so preoccupied with looking for an agenda that you're not actually thinking for yourself or taking the show yeah. at its own merits yeah. it's all just the discourse uh and I again I get it because some shows deserve it some shows open themselves up for it Genlock is opening itself up for it with, oh, with yeah. the whole like interview about like oh this is an allegory for uh, today's culture war Genlock is opening itself up for that discourse Ruby hasn't 
No, in fairness, Ruby yeah. hasn't. The one complaint I would, the only time I can level that at Ruby, and this isn't technically even confirmed, is like what they did to Adam and how much they nerfed him and how much they made him just an a evil asshole. It's the only time they've done that. Overall, and again, I'm the kind of person that will get annoyed when somebody, like, okay, Overwatch, for example. Overwatch is clearly pandering to the LGBT crowd to the point yeah. where if I, were, if I feel like, if I were gay, I would be offended and, and they're, by and, and how Blizzard much they're yeah. pandering to the LGBT yeah, crowd. And Blizzard, yeah, as someone who's like been a heavy, yeah, as someone who's been a heavy Blizzard yeah. player for like, like around like 13, well, 14 years, and playing Overwatch and enjoying it, and then like, yeah, and Blizzard, Blizzard has been strategically doing it. <laughs> yeah, Blizzard has been strategically doing it the last couple of months in order to distract from other controversies. Their company has been uh, yeah, getting, they're like, changing, yeah, they're like, changing yeah. things. They're they're oh, getting, what they're getting you, wait, you don't have a phone to play our new Diablo game oh, on? Yeah. It's not this even the same Diablo game? Yeah. yeah. But the point is, we're giving actually Rooster Teeth a lot of credit here. We're trying to compliment Rooster Teeth here in that I yeah. agree that I do not feel that Ruby has fallen into that trap. And they've done LGBT things, and they actually feel, for the most part, fairly natural and good. My biggest complaint with when Ilya was turned out to be an LGBT character was not that she was in with her motivation to kill Blake's parents. Yeah, it was that I and the kill fact your parents because you didn't love me hard enough. Yeah, that and the fact that she it, it was very obvious that she was a surrogate for what Adam was originally supposed to be. Yeah, like, yeah like, the like, LGBT like, okay. part of it, we didn't even dislike that. We don't even care. Like that actually didn't feel that wasn't the problem. It was all the other stuff. So that's not a, that's not the problem about her at all. Then they introduced um Saffron and uh, yeah, Tara and Terracotta. Terracotta. Yeah, that's right. Her name was so bad, I forgot it. The it's, name. It's what, Tara. It's what, just was, Tara. <laughs> what was my problem with it? Her name. Terracotta is a dumb name. The LGBT part yeah, of it. It is. It is no problem dumb. at all. They actually did a good job of it. They didn't do any. Honestly, they f handled it fantastically. It's the one. Cons it's the one healthy relationship in the entire fucking show, and I like that. Thank you for finally doing that. Nothing wrong with that. So. That stuff, they've all done a good job. This recent stuff with Bumblebee, it doesn't feel like it's LGBT pandering either. That's I don't feel like that's a problem either. So, in fairness to Miles and Carrie especially, they've done that stuff very well, and they don't feel like it's pandering. Now, Genlock, we'll see what Genlock does. But, at least with Ruby, this is a relatively conservative podcast, yeah. let's be honest here. I think yeah. Media Robber and I are, what we'd say, slightly red libertarians, something along those yeah. lines. And high powered is red, I would say. Recreational. Thumb oh yeah. Oh material. god. Did I tell? Did I tell you, dude? Uh, some some fucking twat on uh one of our comment sections for the podcast was like, oh well, I could tell who voted for who based on the who said what in this podcast. Like, motherfucker, one of us voted for. Nor yeah, I, this motherfucker voted for Nora in the elections last year, just uh, last year in 2016. So yeah, you don't know who I actually voted for. But I yeah, so my, the now. point is, like, That's I think about South Park, where it's like a douche and a turd sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a giant douche and a turd sa and a turd sandwich. Exactly. Totally agree with that. The, so the point is, though, that I think that you know, for our podcast to overall, we've never really had a problem with any LGP, LGBT stuff that they've done in Ruby speaks a lot to Miles and Carrie handling that very well and that's a big compliment that they've done that well a lot of shows don't do that well I mean fucking the guys from Avatar The Last Airbender which is one of the greatest TV shows ever not just animated ever they couldn't do it right in Korra they fucked it up majorly and Miles and Carrie did a better job with and, their and LGBT they, stuff they, than... again like one, one, it's just it just goes back in Korra they literally waited to the last yeah, no, that's part of the problem. Exactly, that, that, and that that's a that's, that's a consistent problem. Part of it. Isn't that wasn't that a huge problem with the Naruto stuff too? Yeah. Oh, don't get me started. No, don't get me started on that. Yeah. Do not get me started on Basically, that. Basically, the, 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 the point is, is secure is going to get summoned. Don't wait to the last minute. That's the one thing they're fucking up here in terms of relationships. So As I guess I said, my, so, it's the pots the pots simmering yeah. away. Back to my or original point, which is or not like, black or like yeah, like. We're gonna like we're gonna we're gonna like last minute ship uh, like oh I'm gonna put these two characters together because you know because I like them. Meanwhile, that character's only gotten like maybe. Five so don't scenes do the Naruto series. Bleach fairy tale. Did actually, fairy tale yeah. ever? Actually, no. Really Has fairy tale, tale did ever? Correctly. Actually, fairy tale was like you always gotta knew what who was gonna end up with who. What was the fairy tale shit that ended up happening? 
It was not Sue and Lucy, Actually, of course. Okay, uh, see, not really. It was no, none of the Gray and Juvia. Conf confirm Actually, any of them yeah, except yeah. for Gray and Juvia and um, Levy and Gajo. They like, as far as Got we it. know, Natsu and Lucy still have a technically kind of platonic relationship, and like Urza's still not Jalal. And well, the author already the author already, author already said uh, that they did get together. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and, the author. Well, I don't, I don't anyway. know fuck about fairy tale. Yeah, I know, fairy tale. Um, I saw yeah. watching like three episodes. Like this is boring as hell. I'm doing a rewrite of. I'm doing a rewrite of it, similar to my. I uh, gave it a chance. I was. I got bored. Twenty thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I watched. I so, watched so, three or four. If you want to like fairy tale, check out what I check out my thing. Anyway, uh, back to <laughs> what my my, my, anyway. my point is. In fairness to Black Sun Surfers, I understand why you are upset. Completely yeah. understand why you have a right to be. Honestly. Because they did do so much Black Sun stuff in volumes four and five, so I and agree now with you. Just acting like it wasn't, but thing. but that doesn't mean that the Bumblebee stuff they did in the last few episodes wasn't really fucking good. Okay, you yeah. can't deny yeah. that either. Yeah. You guys have to admit that that was good. That that's pretty yeah. solid fucking writing from this team. Okay, just like yeah. when I admit that the stuff in volumes four and five was very good. Bumble, uh, sorry, Black Sun development. Okay, yeah. So can, let's just agree. That they need to either pick one, or at least address that there's conflict. Okay. Yeah, can I can we, I can see can the we address. All now. agree on More that, please. Okay. And yes. 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 So Absolutely. so uh, I, I want I want to talk. And I, I think we can all unite and tell non-shippers to go fuck themselves because that's just the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. I mean, uh, I understand. Like, so, so, there are some uh, shows that don't need it, but let's I be know, honest, if I, you want yeah. to be realistic to life or uh, relatable in any way. Relationships are fucking important, okay? Yeah. yeah. I actually think and Harry I Potter, it... the original Harry Potter books, did a very solid job of handling relationships. They got more important as the characters got over older, but they never completely took over the entire point of the book. I actually think that was yeah, one of the things like... she did a pretty solid yeah. job on. Yeah, because like so, Harry so... was like in a bunch of Harry was in a bunch of like a, a relationships like throughout. Not the a book bunch, series. really. It was just two. Two. It was really just two. Yeah. Hey. So that's why yeah. I think they did a solid job. So, so I, I do, I do want to address uh, the the Cordo stuff. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. I know, I, yeah. Well, how long are we into this episode? We are one hour <laughs> and twenty six minutes into this podcast, and we're following into the Cordo shit. Uh, That's fine. This okay. is honestly, I'm calling it right now. This is one of our best podcasts ever. I, I'm calling yeah. it. Yeah. So, so okay. I think I might have to the, defend. The, the, right, the sequence ahead. sucks. Uh, it I'm does. Kind of I agree. Last week as well. This is. This is the reason why I don't think it was a good episode. It's not well animated. It's not well paced. Uh, the last like, yeah. work and stuff is done. Like, show crow transforming. And just even do like what you do in Chibi and just have a plume of smoke just poof, and now he's a bird. Yeah, that thing where he like what? runs and jumps off the cliff and then comes back as a bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, off, yeah. Like, why did you have to jump the off the cliff? Direction. Why did he yeah. run forward? <laughs> And yeah, it's this way. Does he have to? Yeah, yeah, it's like what? Does he have to be in free fall to transform or something? Oh, the plot's this no, way. No. Wait, no, the plot's that way. Sorry, I'm going the no, wrong no, way. No, it's because he had to. No, it's because he had to freaking run off. Move the camera. It's 3D animation. Just have him like <laughs> yeah. run to the right off screen and turn into a bird. He had to recalibrate like, his yeah. internal uh, compass whenever he transformed into a bird. Oh, and, and of course, like uh, just. Last week, Ruby was able to snipe missiles out of the air that were flying, and, and this week she she Misses, she needs to like way. get up close to 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 shoot a stationary missile that's still in its holster, uh, and she ends up missing because Cordo catches on. Oh, and here's uh, the best part too: they fired the whole cartridge again. I did. <laughs> I did. Oh wait, let me see if I can get one better yeah. for uh for demonstration. Yeah, because I know, because I don't really have a problem with it, but it, like I know some of the people, uh, the people who like new gods. Laziness. Yeah, no, I can agree with it that. I can really agree with that. I just know a bunch of people in the Discord and uh, people who actually fired firearms and yeah, stuff it, like that. There, it, it, they have issues. With okay, okay. I'll, I'll by the by the way, I buttons. actually fired firearms for the first time in 2018. Holy shit, I see why people uh, like it so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really understand why people fun. enjoy it so much. It is really fun. I only shot so, a pistol. So, uh, I'm, go I'm going to take two two little bits in this episode okay. that are basically unimportant and kind of use this to illustrate uh, what is and isn't worth defending. Okay. So, Ruby firing the whole bullet. 
I can't it's find the random detail. PTB it's such a and G bullet detail. floating around. I'm it, sorry. Yeah, it, it's such a, yeah, it's such a minute detail. It doesn't do anything. This triggers my whatever, autism, but it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you for that, High Powered. It, it shows incompetence on the animator's part that they don't understand. It takes more time and effort to render the full thing <laughs> i know that's the that's the truly incompetent part they, like, you can just live look it up on youtube or on google like how hard is it they to figure it out in texas yeah. even i know they that live too in they live in austin though they, like, they, uh, also, it is still texas that, like also people have pointed they out that when drive... maji did the red trailer he showed how like the bullets worked and stuff like that yeah, like he yeah. showed like it like cartridges yeah, like, being yeah, ejected yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that and they don't get and get like, as Ruby was like cocking her rifle. That is one uh, thing I'll give. That is one thing. Than anybody yeah, else. that was like that's one thing I will give credit to. Like that has gotten worse without Monty. Is Monty would have noticed a detail like that? Absolutely. Yeah. And I Monty, think you, uh, how uh, you totally so, would have. So, so, so triggering high powers Austinism aside. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Uh, again, you again well, best best the, podcast I ever. Uh, I guarantee uh, just, you. Just to would... show like what I'm on. The, this, I ordered this three hours ago. <laughs> God damn, you're gonna you're gonna die of like. Yeah. I'm almost. I I'm like I I've, I've drank half of this bottle of wine since yeah. we started. By the way, too. So that's another reason why uh, this is going so. I'm so I'm, I'm, so, I'm little hyper, Caesars. so I am a hyper as fuck tonight. Um, <laughs> and uh, so another detail in this episode, uh, when Adam and Blake are kind of running towards Blake's uh, broken weapon, uh, because. Adam needs a sword. Adam needs a weapon to like block uh, and take damage with it with a semblance and recharge or whatever. Uh, he has he has his gun strapped to his side, and someone who we have mentioned twice on this podcast already was like, "Oh, that's stupid. Why didn't you just fire the gun?" Here's the thing: like, either be because of what that scene was doing, what the scene was building up to, he either. Didn't he? He was either so out of control that he didn't realize he even still had his gun, mm -hmm. or he did, or, or he was still conscious enough to be like, "Hey, I have my gun, but it's not going to work because Blake can dodge bullets." Either way, it doesn't change the scene, and that scene is so good outside of that moment that it's worth defending. The yeah, rest of the Cordo is. stuff is not good enough <laughs> to defend the 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 little weird. Yeah. detail things like that i don't like I, I i didn't like i was okay i wasn't pretty mad about the cordo stuff but i do agree uh, but i do i do really really like her just like you know what fuck this jumping into the fucking cannon uh yeah, just, so, so oh, no. i did uh, i like well, the idea well, of this scene but i do yeah. agree that like in yeah. context there's a few prop there's All like that problem this... like yeah again how is ruby not able to shoot these rockets out like hit these rockets when she could hit them before when yeah, she was shooting them out of the sky earlier, and I don't know, but I do agree with Sock that I like the whole like okay, well, in for a penny, in for a pounding, and just jumps down the barrel and shoots that. I thought that yeah, was kind of cool. I thought that was cool. I liked that. My thing is, yeah, I liked that. I liked a lot of the concept of this. I liked the. I liked Ren and Ren and Crow working <laughs> together for once for some weird reason. I liked Ren's walking on like climbing on the uh, mech with his weapon i like yeah. ruby using her crescent rose to like cl climb on the 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 um the mech yeah, i to, like to, i like the idea them, yeah. that they had yeah. to take out the shields and things like that i liked ruby climbing going into the barrel to shoot out that was that was kind of badass my, i my yeah. problem is really most of my problems with this all of this sequence comes down to cordo yeah. that's the biggest problem if Cord if they didn't try to make her and funny, media, then, then we wouldn't have these issues. Yeah. That's and the I biggest think, she's yeah. a joke. She's an idiot. She's not threatening at all. And she's not even funny. If they had just yeah. not done that, if she had just been intimidating and scary and stern, this would have been such a better sequence if everything else was the same. Yeah, I mean, you have to give credit though that they didn't do the whole talk no jutsu thing. I'm yeah, actually, you know, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually really mad. I mean, Ruby kind of does it. where she's all like, I'm actually she glad tries that and she tried and failed. Yeah, I'm glad that she tried well, yeah. and failed. That's nice. also good too. I'm glad it didn't no. work. Yeah, 
I'm actually more I, mad that people are calling it Tolk no Jutsu. I'm like, excuse me, you not do talk, not talk about Tolk no Jutsu like that. Tolk no Jutsu works. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's only talk... <laughs> I don't even... Time I don't even... Talk no Jutsu, and there's times where it does and it doesn't work. I was going to say, I'm I'm not even a Naruto fan, but even I know that the whole point of Tolk no Jutsu is it's only Tolk no Jutsu if it works. It's not Tolk no Jutsu if it doesn't work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, am I not? Am I? Am I right here? Pretty much. Like, no, you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're yeah, right. it failed. Yeah. So I like that she tried and failed. I like that too. Again, if it wasn't Cordo, yeah. it would have worked a lot better. That's the problem. Yeah, and it kind of goes back to what I said uh, three or uh, yeah, th two episodes ago when I said I like what happened here. I like the general idea of what happened here. The problem, and again, like I don't know. I'm still just rounding out everything Cordo says because. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, I just don't care and I don't know, I guess I'm good at that, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do but yeah, I like what happened if you like described this sequence of events to me like Ruby, you know, trying the shot once, missing and then going for, you know, trying like a safer shot and missing and then trying a much more dangerous shot and succeeding. That sounds really cool and stuff like that. And so yeah, that's kind of just the like the whole the big bummer of this whole thing is that you know they yeah they have a lot of good ideas which is good like good on miles and carrie for for like having a really good idea of how to make the like initial outline for how to make this volume work and how to how this confrontation should go down i appreciate that but yeah it's like the execution cordovan's annoying as hell and yeah just a lot of issues yeah so that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, like it feels like all of this is more of a along the lines of just like, hey, let's just disable this thing that's gonna be really useful in like ten, nine, <laughs> yeah, eight, seven, yeah. Yeah. In a few six. seconds here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Which is also unfortunate, but it's also one of those things. Like, I'm curious to see where it, where like it goes with the characters. You know, like. How is Jean gonna feel about this since this was technically his plan and this was, you know, his idea that now his family, like his family in particular, is now in danger because of you know this crazy plan that he came up with. What's you know what's Ruby well, actually, gonna feel like? She's technically a leader. Oh, you yeah. can't really say that because uh, well, you can't, you can't, you can't technically I mean, say that. But like the relic was bringing Grim I mean, anyway. The relic yeah. was bringing Grim anyway. I mean, yeah, it's, it was the relic and it was Cordovan being in like yeah taking way too dr taking drastic measures to deal with <laughs> one runaway ship and stuff like that and, like they didn't plan for adam so yeah for jean to like like i don't know it's not like from a in, in the world god's DJ from like a god's eye view it's, it's not necessarily his fault but from w the way he looks at it it might he might blame himself say so, yeah. in the words of dj khaled to cordova congratulations you played yourself Essentially, yeah, and, and it's the so, it's the truth. I mean, Cordova could have just let this slide, and who knows? Or sent ships, just you know, sent like, some fighters. And it, yeah, yeah. She did not have fighters. to go. Yeah, she didn't have to go full retard. And I understand yeah. why is... that's where it ended up, though. Like, I don't okay, mind that's, that's where it ended up yeah. because I understand the point of like yeah. it has to yeah, be and... that the main characters are yeah. going to have to help her out in some way. I still think it's a little too obvious. Again, I would prefer, <laughs> I would have preferred, as Robert kind of said, yeah. like I would have preferred yeah. if this volume ended with the main characters being a lot more down and out. They haven't really <laughs> lost in a while, okay, and we so, need so, that. Yeah. Well, this but, is, to be fair, what I'm, I'm but, okay with the I'm okay with the Walking Fortress now. I'm like these last well, three volumes have made me okay with that. Like again, two episodes ago, I was like, really a Walking Fortress? That seems like a little, much. but now I'm like. Eh. Like if it looked cooler, if it was, if it looked more like something that, well, yeah, like what media was talking about, if it looked like the Atlas that we remember from the first three volumes, I'd be a lot more okay with it. But I'm like, yeah, this was kind of a, I don't know, this was a fun fight. No, I agree that I'm more okay with the actual um, mech itself. Uh, the yeah. design's still and, poor, but I, <laughs> I understand the concept of it at yeah. least. But I yeah. agree. And again, these last three episodes should have been two or one episode. But yes. Yes, but Sorry. we. I think, I think we are. I think we. It's obvious now, based on the length of the last few episodes, that the last episode is definitely going to be the combined one. 
I think are we yeah. all on the same page? Do we all agree yeah. with that? Because <laughs> so something I was thinking about just a little bit ago is you guys were talking about how um oh yeah this is something I thought about we were talking about how apparently they're going to be premiering two episodes of Genlock next week, but for some reason they felt the need yeah. to match the last two episodes of Ruby into one. It's like. Yeah. Why do you just say, "Hey, it's a two. It's going to be a two episode finale"? I don't know. I thought that was funny. Yeah. That is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I just this, thought, is, this is my. So I, I mentioned this before, like in it, it, on the Discord, which mm-hmm. you should, by the way you should join the Discord if you want to get on the, in on these insightful conversations. Yes, you should. Um, I feel that we are gonna the, this feel. I'm getting volume three vibes again, all over again, because. We're having I'm, a. We're, we're not. So is, do we want? Do we I, want to go we have an Atlas blunder? We have an Atlas blunder. <laughs> True. Of okay. some kind mm-hmm. going on. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, the Grim are attacking. Yeah. Technically speaking, the White Fang is there too. Just a, a very angry rogue element of the White Fang is there. He's dead that's now. That's been though. dealt with. One is there now. Yeah. And Cinder and Neo are off screen somewhere, which. If they don't show up in the last episode, I have no clue. What's it'll going it'll on. make me it'll make me hate the Grim Reaper episode more, because yeah. then uh, the, the the most recent scene with Cinder and Neo would be absolutely pointless. Oh, what if they? Oh, no, no. What if they? Save, save they don't even have to get involved. I'm okay if we just get like a brief. No, 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 if they just no, no, make no, a cameo. No, 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 but... no, 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 no. Because no, they need to get involved. That, that At this point, they need to get involved. Okay, no, no, no. no. The, the yeah, first so- scene was said. No, I- I'm the one talking. C- Cinder's first scene was important because it mm-hmm. established like she's still out there, she's still gonna be hunting Ruby and stuff. Her second scene with Neo, like, okay, yeah, that because it's taking place like in the same time period or whatever. She and she recruits Neo. The third scene with them when they're in the vault, completely pointless yeah. if they don't pull the trigger on that this volume. They could have saved okay. that for next volume, or at the very least, save that for the. Uh, the stinger for this uh, volume. Sa- save what it for if, next episode. What if they do that? Like, what if they do this? It's like they, uh, kind of like they they basically the Grim Re- if they do like where the Grim Reaper episode was kind of like a hint for the finale where Ruby does her silver eye bullshit, but she's weakened and then Stinger pops up and it's like you know that's where they kind of they kind of they kind of the silver eyes. I think that would be too much too fast. The weird thing is that yeah. I was expecting them not to be a factor until they got to Atlas, but now, like, they have to be. If they're not yeah. in this episode, they don't become a factor during this fight. I'm going to be confused as fuck, and not in a good way, obviously. Yeah. Not like, well, like, uh, okay, like, uh, and again, it goes back to this, to the complaint that we all kind of had with uh, Adam showing up, even though, like, yes, he, we knew he was going to show up this volume. We were all in agreement that he was on that train. Um, the thing is, they could have cut that Cinder and Neo scene out and replaced it with a scene of Adam stalking Team Ruby. Yep. Because mm-hmm. that's more re- because that's more relevant for this volume. The Cinder and Neo stuff, as it stands, as what what it looks like the finale is going to be, it's mm-hmm. not relevant for this volume. They could have saved it for next volume or the end of of the volume yeah. as like literally the post credit scene or or like the final scene like, like the post credit like, like, scene it would have been Cinder waking no, no, up no, no, and the, no 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 like a, like a, like no 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 like Lionheart no no I'm talking about just the scene where they're in the vault the other two scenes were important oh, for this volume okay uh yeah I agree that, with that, that because that the scene the scene in the vault was already pointless because it just restated a bunch of yeah. stuff we already knew okay. um and like that. I think that if they were going to have that and then not have Cinder and Neo show up again, they should have saved that for, like, the final scene of this volume, uh, a la the Lionheart stuff from Volume 4 with uh, okay. him and Watts. Because then we're not expecting Cinder yeah. and Neo to show up at any time, which, yeah. unless That's the next good. episode is, like, 30 minutes long or at least 25 I think it, I plus. think it's got to be at least 30 minutes long. 25 to 30 yeah. minutes at least. Yeah. 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 A minimum of 22 minutes of, like, for real episode, not including the Gen Lux teaser and cuts and uh, cuts. I think it's got to be at least 25 minutes of actual episode. Mm-hmm. And it, at least. It's. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's 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 a curious situation because yeah. now it's like at the point so, two was like well, and then here's the other thing too. Also, is it's it's the loaded gun that's sitting on the table is is as I said at the like near the beginning of this podcast. At any time, Ruby can just dab on the giant grim, and the problem goes away. I mean, I think based on the setup, are are we not pretty damn confident that that's what's going to happen? Well, it's it's going to happen. Well, the other thing too we got to remember is too also is so, I don't want that to be what happens. Uh, I don't want is, it to be what happens either. But that's probably what's going to happen. Is it? Yeah. So let's let's take a, 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 a My, account of this real quick. All of the teams okay. like semblances are pretty much gassed at this point, right? Like I think everyone's so, flashed John, except Nora, John, Yang, Nora, Blake, Yang, Weiss, um, Blake. Not Weiss. Weiss still has some aura left. Weiss and, uh, Yang, but she, Weiss and but, but Ren she's running and Crow. On, but she's running on empty. Yeah, yeah Weiss, yeah. Ren, Crow, Maria, Oscar. They're the ones who still have aura Two left. And, uh, yeah, and so it's kind of... Re- yeah, and so, I don't know. Right now, my so, biggest fear is that we're going to get less of Volume 3 finale and more like The Breach again. Where they're, where like they just completely ignore, you know, the fact that several people are down. Ooh, are like I could see aura. that too. We could get a breach really 2.0. Okay, so so here's my theory. I really don't theory. want that. I, I, okay. I want this. Go ahead. I I want this to be the episode breach should have been. Okay. You no know, high, high stakes, minimal loss. Uh, you know, vi- victorious conclusion overall. I don't think, I don't think we ever need a volume three level defeat again. Oh, no, I disagree with that. I, I, I disagree with that. I don't think but next volume, next level. volume, we need the volume three level. Yes, that's what uh, I was yeah. going to say. No, I, I'd, ra- I'd rather take a series of very small defeats throughout the rest yeah. of the show, like maybe Ruby yeah. getting kidnapped for uh, kidnapped in an episode, and then she's like in prison for for like the majority of the volume, and then a volume finale is them rescuing her, uh, like the stuff like that is is kind of what I want. I don't think we need another like he, because here's the thing. It would it would feel too much of a rehash. It would feel too much like, oh, volume mm-hmm. three is unanimously the most beloved finale in in Ruby. So let's just do it again. Uh, I would rather, especially. For I feel the, like there are ways I for. Like, I feel like I don't know. Right. I feel like there are ways for them to have a devis have a really devastating volume ending and for it to not be a like total rehash of volume three. Like like what I suggested it last week and stuff like that. That you know. I mean, I would definitely, I would say with with Robert, like, I would definitely go with the idea that, like, Team Ruby played a hand in potentially destabilizing, like, the sphere of safety that Argus has, and that this could be like, oh, look, now we have political upheaval because Mistral's like, we're going to take back our quote-unquote rightful clay, which was Argus. And so, who knows? But uh, I, I don't, I don't think we're going. To I don't deal know with about the this volume. Of yeah. that. I, I don't think we're ever going to deal with the long-term repercussions. True. Because true. Assumedly, they're going to be out of Argus by the by the finale, and they're probably yeah. going to be entering Atlas at the start of Volume Seven. Yeah. And because so, of, so, because of because the entire point of these last couple volumes has been how slow communication is between the kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Um. Like we're we're probably never going to actually hear another word from Argus again after, after this. this. Yeah. Oh God! What if that's the big plot reveal that makes everything better? Is like Atlas gets the freaking uh, towers working again? No, they they had that, they might, would, have that to would feel like a fail. bit of a yeah. That would they, feel they, like they, a they, they would have to they would have to fix the one mail that the dragon is so currently perched on. Like yeah. the dragon is currently frozen solid in stone. On yeah. top of the what remains of the tower. Yeah, something I could maybe see them doing is like Terra. Or yeah, they work with Terra to uh, try and like boost their signal or something like that to get it to realize. I don't even know if that's like even remotely possible. I don't know how radios work. I mean, it could be but... remote, it, could, it could be possible, but like, would it matter in time, especially with all the amount of grim that are there? Yeah, that's also kind of the question: is do they have time for that? Like, it might be kind of cool if they do that, but. Yeah, so it's kind of, I don't know. I am currently wondering, like, how much... Because I've heard, I've seen some people say that, like, kind of talk about possibly they just, you know, basically make their getaway and leave Argus to its fate and stuff like that, which would... I'm pretty sure Jean would not be on board with that. Yeah, Jean would not. I know my, I know my boy. He's not going to do that. Yeah, it's like Jean definitely would not be okay with 
which I don't know, maybe that builds a rift between him and someone or something like that. Like they knock him out, drag him on, drag him onto the ship, and then take off, and he's just no, like, no, no, beca because uh, Ruby would not be fine with that either. No. Yeah. yeah, neither. Yeah, so yeah, Jean and Ruby definitely would not be. Um, but I do, but like it does kind of raise the question of how much can they do? You know, semblances. Most of them are out of aura. Well, it might well, be kind. Of, I mean, it might be kind of cool if we still get to see them, like if we see a few of them actually fight and not even bother with, like, they're just like, you know what? Screw it. We're doing this anyway. Well, even, or have a few of them be like, you know, we're doing this anyway, even, you know, without Aura because we have to. And I don't know, maybe one of them comes out of it with a cool scar or something. But anyway, go yeah, ahead. Well, well, well Ru Ruby is definitely going to Silver Eye zap that fucking Leviathan. Um, Probably, yeah. yeah. That's, that's and, a but guarantee. there's still a bunch of, like, Chimeras. So I'm wondering how they're going to do it. More, I think we're going to get more of a curb stomp on that on that front, like a showcase of how far uh, Team Ruby has came. Maybe fingers crossed. Uh, supercharged Weiss's um, armored Gigas. Uh, if that does not happen, like a combination of the two. I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah I, I already said this weeks ago that like if they never do, if they don't do that in this in this uh, last stretch of episodes, I'm gonna be pissed, and I'm gonna yeah. be pissed about next week's episode if they don't do something like that. Well, I mean, if they don't do it against the yeah. freaking mech, they need to do it against the Leviathan. We need a kaiju fight. We've got Ultraman yeah. versus Grimzilla. Yeah. yeah. All right. Which, by the way, I'm happy. So something happy I can see that. happening is maybe is maybe it's like. Team Ruby takes out the takes on the Leviathan, and we get like I don't know some good teamwork there. And it's like okay, we're down, we're weak, but we got to do this. And then like Team Junior, and by the way, something I'm really happy about is apparently Miles and Carrie have officially just started calling them Team Junior, which means they're not going to do give us any of that Team Orange bullshit. So I'm happy I about that. I hate <laughs> the name Team Junior. Oh, yeah. Junior's not even a color. I don't know. It'd be better Juniper. just to make it, it, just make it Juniper again. Just Oscar Pine. He's got a P there. It's no, because Oscar needs to die. <laughs> Team Range. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Why do you Oscar's want Oscar? Yeah. yeah, that's my problem is I don't want, is I don't, I don't want, want Oscar having, in anything. I don't, Fuck Oscar. Yeah. He sucks ass. <laughs> He's even worse than yeah. Blake, and that's difficult to do. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right, I have a, hold I on. Have a lot of, I have a lot of problems with Oscar being on Team Juniper, or being yeah. like the new part of Team Juniper or Team Orange is... He would replace John as leader. He would replace Pira, and he just should not be on any team. He should be in the background like Ozpin was. So he should not yeah, exist anymore right. in the show. You never so, should have existed in the first and, place. Yeah, so sucks. I'm, I'm I'm getting okay with Oscar, but no. like I do understand your points. Like no. Oscar's fine. Huh? <laughs> I'm getting okay with him. Know, anyway, fine. so <laughs> anyway, my but yeah, team... so like I could see it as like the yeah Team Ruby take on the Leviathan. Everyone else you know deals with the Manticores and someone who's. Or is currently down comes out of it with a cool scar or something. What I'm expecting is I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting <laughs> them to, and I'm actually at this point because none of the stuff that they they took so long to resolve the Cordo and the Adam thing, which the Adam stuff was worth it, but the Cordo stuff obviously wasn't. Yeah. I'm expecting this to a volume to end very positively, which is fine. Okay. I'm okay with that. I, I so that means yeah. the next volume has to be the very negative one. Now I understand like, Media's yeah. point about if they just rehash Volume Three, it would be a problem. But the reason why I they've ne here's the thing: Volume Three as an ending was negative, but it wasn't actually it could have been a lot worse. And that's kind of the <laughs> thing. Mo again, More people could have been dead. Yeah, there could be. A, there's a lot worse stuff that people come back from. That's a really, that's really good. That's a lot of good storytelling comes from that. I think the reason why I don't think it would be a rehash I, I want volume 7 the end of volume 7 to not be it wouldn't be a rehash of volume 3 because it would be worse because, because also, Atlas is such a big military threat yeah. like that's the whole thing Atlas is such a big scary. military threat and there's no way they could conceivably make sense of winning an Atlas yeah, you've, they got lots, you live, you've got literally got lots of theory coming and utterly get their asses kicked in Atlas and I mean like <laughs> everything goes wrong okay so that's why I feel like it's okay if this volume ends positively because I feel like next volume will be the one where yeah. everything goes to shit. Ruby gets captured. Uh, Nora announces I mean, that she's pregnant. Oscar <laughs> dies, which is actually a good thing. But Everything you know, just slides off we'll the rails. It's a bad thing. Crow gets killed. Maria gets killed. Or maybe, you know what? Oscar gets killed. That'd be great too. You know, all that <laughs> stuff. So, And then, like, you know, people get hurt. You know, 
Ren gets injured. Nora, now she's pregnant. All that shit. R- Ruby's captured. <laughs> John's sword breaks. I don't know. All that kind of shit. They lose. I can completely. see maybe they and, kidnap John as well as Ruby. Yeah, or and they lose completely. And they lose completely because Volume Three they technically did stop the Grim from taking over completely, and they did stop Cinder from taking over and all that. So they actually accomplished a lot in Volume Three. As much as people think it's like a negative ending, it's not entirely. A lot of and then and then like the curse kinda, on that was Volume did, Five. It was like, a pyrrhic victory, but a victory nonetheless. Volume Seven needs to be complete and utter defeat and that's where they, they come lose. back and that's when they, again that's why i said before when i was in japan when i was like that's when they completely the, the adults are irrelevant they recruit like team sun and everything oh, and yeah. that's when it's entirely the kids and that's how when they realize that they can't actually defeat salem you know also what if it what if salem actually comes in in volume seven and that's why they completely and utterly lose because Atlas is the biggest. I feel like the team. idea of like Atlas, Atlas is the turning out, turning out to, to actually being run by Salem. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, stuff like that. Then it's entire that's and that's when they realize they can't actually defeat Salem. They actually have to talk no jutsu, but they can talk no jutsu in a cool way. <laughs> you know, that's when they realize that that's I, and that's yeah. when the show like when it's it's entirely on the kids entire you know entirely whatever that's yeah. when it's all on the kids. So I would like that. So that's why I feel like it wouldn't just be a rehash of Volume Three. Because it would be worse than Volume Three, yeah. And I think it's what Robert kind of was getting at earlier too. That's my ideas for for yeah. this is are based off of Robert's really good ideas for <laughs> what would happen. So well, not only that, it would balance. It would like because you've got like you know like Fall of Beak in Volume Three could be kind of like you could you could you know split hairs there for like whoever like who won. Or I mean, let's... how worse it could be. But then you've got Volume Five where it was kind of like a curb stomp on one end. Yeah. And then we because at, at, at the end of volume five, at the at the end at the end of volume and five, volume we were four, talking about, volume four was very positive. Yeah, yeah the, volume, like Argus doesn't really matter in this kind yeah. of, in this context. Like, like sure, save the day here. However, the, like at the end of volume five, we're like, you know, we, the balance of power needs to be shifted again. These villains are kind of like, like, like they need to become a threat again. They need to be relevant, and you know, they're working towards that. So, like, I can see uh, Alice, you know, not only being the uh, the biggest threat to uh, Salem's Dude's Spring. camera just fell off oh, the wall. I did it on purpose. Yeah. Because I can't, I, because I'm recording, I have to keep like everything going. So you get a nice shot of my Reaper statue's ass or whatever for a little bit. Nice. Yeah, it's like, but, yeah, it's like I gotta go Alice for a second. Gonna... Yeah. Okay, it's fine. But yeah, like, Alice is their biggest, their biggest threat. That's why they're literally ascending, you know, Watts and Tyrion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's people who are actually just gonna get shit done. <laughs> The two guys who've never failed at anything, yeah, apparently. Well, eh, that's not true. Well, hey, you don't know about Murderbot here. You don't know about Watson as Murderbots, aka Robot Masters. <laughs> I swear to God, I, I swear to God, Watts better have his fucking Murderbots. I'm, t- I'm calling it, dude. If Penny's, if Penny's uh, I want father him to is Dr. White, and then Watts is Dr. fucking Wiley. He's going to have Murderbots. He's going to fucking... There we go. We're, oh, we're going to get the whole Penny supply. It's going to be... That's, that's what fucks everything over. It's like, oh you just got God. super... No, you've got... So, so you got Robot Master Penny, and it's just like, but it's not Penny. Yeah. It's, it's not. So by Penny. the way, uh, <laughs> let's you, something I, I forgot think... to actually talk about that I wanted to talk about. Sorry if I kind of derail things a little bit, but something else I wanted to talk about that kind of bugged me a little bit um, during the, uh, or yeah, during the court scene where they're taking down Cordovan is that Ruby has that. So I think I kind of understand what Coop and Dude were talking about with kind of being annoyed with the way that. Uh, Crow's being handled this volume, or with the fact that Ruby's kind of talking to him about how you know we don't, or yeah, we don't necessarily need your help, and we're you know, we don't need the adults and stuff like that. Oh, is, talking down to the adult, okay, yeah, I yeah exactly. Is I kind of feel like, um, the problem with that is that Crow is that like in universe, this is like really the first time where. Pro, you know, undermining the girls and, you know, the adults kind of bossing them around has really been treated like a problem. Is it? And it feels like it came out of nowhere. Even though we, the audience, have had an issue with it since Volume 5, it feels like this is the first time that it's really being addressed. So it almost feels like they are um, addressing this issue from Volume 5 without actually admitting that they're, without actually talking, like admitting that there was a problem in volume five essentially is there like nobody's saying like hey you know you guys held us back back in mistral and all that shit went down 
And so, you know, that's why things are going wrong. And like, you know, and like, that's the, and like, that's a problem. You know, they're not, this is the first time that the adults being in charge has really been treated like a problem. So like, Ruby had this line to Crow this episode, you know, trust me, I'm like, or I've got this or something like that, where he tries to stop her. It's like, that seems like it's really the first time he's actually tried to stop her and it's been a problem. So, yeah. Well, that and a few episodes, like three episodes ago when she had her speech in the hallway, is these feel like the only two times where Crow trying to, like, holding them back has re and trying to be in charge has really been a problem. So that's just something I was thinking about and, yeah, it was something I wanted to talk about but didn't get the chance to. So anyway, on to predictions. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's fine. Like, I can see what you mean, though. It's like, yeah, it's it's it feels like you're talking down to an adult, especially your Uncle Crow. It's like, I get it, Crow's kind of a, a downer, but you're you're like yeah. you how much with how much love and how much bullshit Crow's just gone through, you yeah. should be a little bit more empathetic. And it's just like we appreciate it, but it feels like it's the first time it's really been a problem. Like I said, you know, they're yeah. addressing this issue that we had with Volume Five without actually saying that this was a pro without actually admitting that it was a problem in volume five kind of yeah yeah i can see what, i can see what you're going with that. again but i'm yeah. kind of fine with them just completely ignoring volume five as much as possible that's fair i guess yeah as we mentioned before but anyway like... so yeah but i do agree um that with this next episode i would like it if it was kind of, kind of like what media said if it's what the breach should have been like grim still feel like a threat and stuff like that which with all these characters with their aura down, if they also get in the fight, that would still be really, you know, that could be really cool. There would be, you know, a legitimate sense of tension and maybe like they do a little fake out death or I don't know, maybe they do kill off like one of the adults, Maria, Oscar or Crow or something like that. Like I think, I think something again, back, like one I'm, of them, at, I don't know, just like that little bit of- I'd be fine sadness. with this one ending like just as a positive episode and I'd be okay with that. I think yeah. again, Save it for next volume when they just balls out, fuck everything up. I would love that. Because, again, yeah. volume three, Ruby defeated Torchwick, got rid of Neo. Yeah. They, she defeated Cinder. She stopped the Grim. And she got rid of, again, uh, things that she got rid of Cinder. So the only mm -hmm. actually bad things that happened was <laughs> Yang got her arm. Vale was cut overrun. Vale was Lady overrun. And Pyrrha died. Mm -hmm. And Penny was before the finale part, so she doesn't yeah, count actually yeah. as part of the finale. So it's three bad yeah. things versus what five or six good things. Yeah. Well, so, considering one of those bad things was the fall of Beacon, which is this yeah. world-shaping event. Um, like that, that's that's what I'm talking about as far as like bad stuff. I don't want another like fall of Beacon level. This is going to change the way the ruby world functions oh, or whatever no. i don't See, want i think what mm. i expect what i want to happen is just that like i mean it's i wouldn't mind like a reveal of this is how the world is actually yeah exactly that's what i was expecting yeah. that's what i want is basically like yeah i mean salem's running atlas essentially which is fine like <laughs> but that's like so yeah. atlas is already seemingly which so would be really which i think would also be really cool if what, it, what I, it, if, it's, if Salem's all like, haha, Ozpin, I took a system that you set up and turned <laughs> it against you. Fuck you, Ozpin. Yeah. Or, or even, uh, or even that, was already Haven, that was already Haven, though. Yeah, or even at this I point, you can literally, at this point, you, uh, like, their, their biggest threat is actually just Iron Ironwood. If they just take out Ironwood and, like, if they have, like, Jocks take the seat and just don't do anything. Don't inf interfere in her plans. She just takes yeah, the relic yeah. and leaves. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think. Okay. So I think we're getting to predictions now, if that's okay, right? I'm pretty sure we've been in predictions. Yeah, yeah so yeah, we've been. <laughs> I pulled us out so, of predictions temporarily. I expect that this volume to end very positively, and you know, at this point, I'm fine with it as long as next volume they change it up. Because, so yeah, maybe they'll, Cordovan they'll, makes a heroic sacrifice. But, yeah, they'll yeah. fight Cordovan, who gives a shit about her, and they win, and then they go to Atlas, and then they hint that it's going to be not as easy as you would expect, right? And then we get next volume where things are all fucked up because honestly at this point like i'm expecting a fairly positive easy ending to this volume with a cool fight scene and you know what? if that's it fine because guess what the the adam uh, stuff again, was again, good again, enough that i don't care that if, if the rest again, again it, it's it's like the breach if team coffee were just completely cut from it yeah which is what this seems that's like fair. it's gonna be essentially is yeah. 
So I want John to kill just one Chimera. Like all he has to do is kill one Chimera, and he is officially more. Yeah. So like, he will officially be more of a badass than he's been in the entire so series. So I, I want to bring. Hey, hold on, no, hold on, hold on. Let me finish part. my part. He does his part, brother. He does his he part. He does his part, but it will still be the most badass thing he's done since Volume One. I, I want to bring. I don't know. He kind of take the mech hand. Well, just... no. Let, let me let me finish first because I I haven't. <laughs> oh, finished. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. So again. Like as I said, next volume, what I'd want to happen it's not a world changing thing. It's that the characters will realize that this is like as Robert said, this is the way the world is. It turns out like that Atlas is basically being run by Salem or her goons or whatever. And they're trying to stop that from being the case and they fail miserably at it and they get fucked up. I want the care the team the, the characters and them to be much more desperate because let's be honest, at the end of volume three they're still mostly positive to we're not sure how they mm-hmm. feel. Yang's the only one who's miserable. Blake, we don't know because she's running away like a little bitch. And <laughs> Ruby, Ren, Nora are all like, yeah, we're going to go do this thing. You know, I don't want, I wanted them to feel like they can't do shit at the end of volume seven. I want them to feel fucking hopeless like they failed miserably. It doesn't change the world because no one's... Basically what I want is that they fail miserably and things all get fucked up. But the rest of the world doesn't know it. So it doesn't change the world. It's not a fall of beacon situation. It's that they realize that this is how Alice is run. And they try to fix it and they can't. And they get specifically fucked up completely. And they lose Crow and uh, Mm -hmm. Oskhtard and uh, Maria and all that stuff. And I like Maria and Crow. But yeah, it's great. get rid of all the adult characters. Ren and Nora have a kid. <laughs> Seriously, that actually would be genuinely interesting too, not just because of my Renora shippingness. But that'd be an interesting twist, and I'd it would be interesting for a, the way a lot of characters would handle that, let's be honest. Yeah. Um and I think and, and again, Ruby gets captured, because that's not happened before. Maybe Jean too, but I think just Ruby personally, because I'd rather I'd like to see Jean be the one trying to lead them on getting Ruby back. Personally, I'd like to see Jean yeah. be the one who saves yeah. her. Okay, just saying. The Lancaster. Right. Yeah, I'm, Lancaster. I'm mostly, I'm mostly, I mostly suggested that because I don't know. First of all, Tyrion's expressed interest in Jean, and I'm curious as to what that's about. Yeah. Also, I think you could still get some nice Lancaster moments if, like, the two of them are the are like the only. Yes, that's know. true too. Yep. Supporting comfort they have while in captivity, but yes. yeah, if it's that's leading the guards to rescue her, that could also be cool. Either one works, yeah. Um, but yeah, I want them to get off. And I, again, so you literally only have the kids left to do everything, and then you recruit Team Sunday. They go to va- they retreat to Vacuo in some way, or they get forced into Vacuo. That's where they get Team Sun, and that's who they you know they start. It's all the kids going through to the end of the show, essentially. I would imagine, or at least the yeah. end of the original planned run of the show. Yeah, because it, it can still be like it can still be like how I said it. It's like they don't they can't rely on Atlas to do anything yeah. for them because Atlas is like, you know, you got a jock sheet. It's like, what's in it for me? Yeah. So with that in mind, it'd be fine if um, if this end the end of this volume one more happy ending before like the really bad ending before things start getting more positive. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's where I I like to see that could be fair. go with because yeah, I can see I can see Vacuum being like the oh, what's the what's the phrase I'm looking for but like. It's like like Vacuo being the catalyst for them being able to actually fight against Salem's yes, bullshit. Yes, exactly. Yes, like the like, final frontier, yeah, the yes. final arena. Because like, yeah, they've, already, they've always said like Vacuo is pretty like Vacuo is really really strong because you have to be strong to like live out there. And like I mean, and they were like a big part of like the war too. Like they, their fighters were just better. And so I don't I don't know. Like there's not a much well, there's not a lot we do know about Vacuo, but I can see them. Like being highly, especially with the freaking book that's getting that that we're, that's coming out uh, with the coffee and, and all that, so it's like yeah, no, I, I refuse to accept that as canon. <laughs> we'll, be can be be, Ruby, we'll be pretty badass though if Ruby like manages to basically unite and or yeah, unite this whole, you know, this like basically nomadic and chaotic group and like no unite them all under her banner and stuff like that. That might be kind of. Yeah, cool. gonna, gonna, gonna be like what Zoro said he was going to do in Wano, but it was completely failing at. Zoro is just doing Zoro things. He's getting lost and just kind he, of. He <laughs> promised Luffy he would gather all the samurai, and he, he hasn't he, done anything. 
He's just drinking and walking around in a place with smiling at him. He's just yeah. he's he yeah. does he's he is where he needs to be. That's all he has to know. <laughs> yeah. I, so uh one thing I wanna bring up, uh this kinda of, there was a, like a mild Twitter drama that happened. No. I don't yeah. even really say it was Twitter I... drama. I think it was uh I think it was uh, Pira's voice actor accidentally spilling some beans accidentally no, on purpose. No, no, no. That first of all, that was several weeks ago, and I think we already covered that. Did we? With Pira's voice I don't know actor. What you're talking about. Uh, uh, basically, Pira's she point... she no, insinuated. No, no, no. The... Yeah, you go, media. Pira's vo... unless you're talking about Aaron Blake's voice actor. No, Jen Brown. That no. uh, yeah, J Jen Brown uh, announced that like uh, she had just done some voice work for Rooster Teeth. And people just automatically assumed, oh, Pierre's coming back, or the red-haired woman's coming back. Like, <laughs> no, I already did all my work for Ruby. I'm talking about something else entirely. That was some, it that was might be kind ago. of cool, though, if, like, the red-haired woman does show up and basically just reveals, uh, no, I'm Pierre's I... mom and just kicks all the... And like, just, like, I'm going to say my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, they don't have... Like, like I said, they're... You know, a lot of them are running on empty. They might appreciate the yeah. extra help if it's just her. If it's just her. Yeah. So, so, oh. unless High Power was talking about Aaron's voice actress because she did a Q and A through Twitter because she's oh, got yeah. nothing better to do with her time with all the work <laughs> she doesn't have. Um, yeah. She was busy being Queen Bee. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say this as a, like, okay. I don't want to get into this because we already talked about yeah. the fucking shipping and stuff for like an hour and a half. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, it was a big thing this week, Aaron, okay? Like, Aaron is not helping. She was, all. dude. She's on, like, yeah. she was all over my Twitter, dude. Like, I liked when she talked about like, hey, you guys don't know. I, yeah. But yeah, she's really, she's really poking the hives and poking the bears and stuff like that. And but she's a bumblebee. Like, she's a bumblebee shipper, isn't she? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Her and, and so, yeah, well, are. And, 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 to, to an almost anyway, disturbing effect, like yeah, I wouldn't say so. Much, but... <laughs> anyway, uh, if, I think Barbara everyone, might be a little uncomfortable, but no. If if everyone is already done with their predictions, um, I am. No. Yeah, I got uh, our, I got did, I, did, I, did I? We could show. Did, yeah, did we I, could show them. My... Maybe. Well, no, uh, we, we, we got we got we got a pair of we got a pair of emails. To oh read. yeah, that's right. Okay, oh, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll read up the emails. We did answer one though. Basically, uh, was basically mentioning uh, how uh, Eruption Fag's gonna be ass blasted. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 We that one's it. been covered. Fuck so him. I will read the other one from across. Uh, the video. But but uh, but uh, who who asked us that question about Eruption Fag? Just so, just uh, to throw their name out there. Edward. Uh, Edward. I'm not gonna say their last name. Uh, Edward right, asked right, this right, question. All right. No, well, the other one your is from, I, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with eruption fang, but like, our, 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 wait, eruption just, fang, wait. So, what did eruption fang actually do this week? Uh, just, just go on a rant about them shitting on Adam because he's dumb. Like, uh, what so, else is so, new? Uh, yeah. so, so, <laughs> I, so, he's so, not so wrong, is, but, but so, he's, he's, he's Adam standing, but he's not Adam standing in the way Lulu does. Yeah. It. Anyway, uh, who asked the question? And I, I already looked at it, so I already know what the question is. But so it's this, this you... from Cross Zio. Hey, do you think that the only way for Emerald to get a good redemption is for her herself to hit rock bottom via betrayed by Cinder, comma, beat to near death, comma, and struggle to survive till she either by herself or through help find the path to make up for her crimes? I don't Red think she... verbatim. So... <laughs> this is another reason why Cinder needed to survive Volume Five, because Emerald is at a place where her character isn't going to be able to change for jack shit until she reunites with Cinder. Yeah, she's kind of stuck in place right now. Yeah, she's in limbo. Yeah, yeah. It's a better way to I'm phrase not it. sure. <laughs> I'm not sure she needs like that much of a betrayal to start on some well, manner no, of no, redemption no. arc right, right, but... now, right now she has this very idolized look at cinder and we okay, talked about this true. several several weeks ago with the emerald and mercury scene she has this super idolized look at cinder that like until that perception changes which can only happen from cinder she's going to still be loyal to cinder's ideal she's going to stay loyal to salem because cinder was loyal to salem okay that's fair Oh, uh, yeah, maybe yeah, he doesn't need yeah. the massive beating, but I don't know. Yeah. She, yeah, I don't know if she needs yeah. as much that much. 
and I don't even know how like I don't even know how much of like a rede I think it might just be a redemption. Um, I, I still don't like, like the death, idea of like uh, death. I think it might just be like a death by redemption. Or yeah, I was gonna say I, 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 I think she gets killed. I, I don't think, think she gets a full redemption. Redemption I think equals she dies. death type thing where like she dies making one good choice. Yeah, I still don't like the idea of uh, them doing a face turn with Emerald at this point, just because of uh, how rushed Alias face turn was. Well, yeah, I can see more of like, do a death, death we, equals redemption. We thing. do not redemption we do equals not death. Need more yes. good. We do. This is a pro. And I I sound like a broken record because I know I've said this a million goddamn <laughs> times. We have we too many do good not guys. Need new heroes. We need more yes. villains. This has been a problem since episode one of volume one. <laughs> oh, I can see what they got. I can see they're doing, doing. It's not like, it's like, it's more along the lines of she's, she gets salty and betrayed because Cinder essentially just replaces her. Like she's just kind of like cast out this to the side. And so she does she's her best. really to jealous be of Neo. <laughs> yeah, no, she does her best to become Salem's new favorite. Mm. Yeah, so where she kind of like, you know, because mm -hmm. of, cause, cause if Cinder does some certain things in a certain a set order, uh, then, like, she could eventually feel like, well, no, fuck you, like, I, I gave everything to you, and you're doing this to me. So she I'm going to take really what's yours. and needs someone to... Yeah, she, she's very codependent, so she'll go to Salem, who's the only one who's been kind of like, mm -hmm. she's been terrifying, she's more, like, Cinder is scared of her. So it's to the point where it's just like, just go to the next power. Mm. I don't see. See, the thing is, I don't see. I don't see Emerald becoming like a full-on good guy. I think that's silly. I just expect yeah. I'm not her... saying good guys just be. Your... I'm still leaning towards death equals redemption. Yes, that's or that's what I'm leaning death. toward. That's I'm leaning toward. Part maybe part she part tries part. to join the good guys, but she dies in the process. I think either way, she yeah. dies. Redemption in the equals death. That. That's what I'm leaning yep. towards. Yeah, that's what I think too. I'm just gonna oh, say think, uh, and I don't think about, they need, and I don't think that, they need uh, to go as far as what the question asker implied of like or said of like the beating yeah. knowledge. No, I don't think that needs to happen. Yeah, and, and just just a, another note uh, on that. Uh, just one last reminder: Adam died this episode. We really need more villains because right yeah. now we basically have Tyrion and Hazel, and that's it as far as like credible like physical threats that we that we can actually quantify. You've got Mercury like, and Emerald we, just kind of yeah. sitting there. We're dropping like flies in Cordova. Whitley! 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 No, no, no. Whitley doesn't fight, though. We yeah, already know Whitley doesn't, Whitley doesn't fight. And he can still Mercury be a good, like, like, like behind-the-scenes villain. He's a political and, villain. No, no, no. And Mercury is weaker than Yang. Volume 5 yeah. kind of confirmed that. It, was, it did a really terrible job because it never actually showed that fight. But Mercury is not a credible threat. I mean, if he ever gets his semblance back somehow... I don't think no. I I I think no. I don't think he needs one. I, he needs to get stronger. Yes, mm -hmm. but I would rather him because that's such an interesting thing, and it actually made him interesting. Like yeah, fair giving enough, him fair a would undo would completely ruin that. That would be stupid. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying. <laughs> I agree with you. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if if that's all, uh. uh we ready to shut it down? Yeah. Do, I still want them to do plugins? something awesome with Whitley next volume and treat him like an actor. Other than that, yeah, let's. Yeah, I have something to play this week, actually. Oh, you do? I'm actually. I'm gonna go hard on this. Uh, the Salem's uh, new toy. Uh, kind of theory. <laughs> I'm, I'm setting myself oh, on this track. Well, well I mean, becoming Salem's new toy. Yeah. New pet. Uh, I'm gonna okay. see if uh, my. I'm, I'm gonna see if my internet can handle my camera again, so that you can all see my face one last time as I give my plugins. Uh, if you like this <laughs> yeah. podcast and you want to see more, like, comment, and subscribe as my camera is already lagging um, <laughs> on my end anyway I don't know how You're it works on your end um, yeah uh, so consider supporting my Patreon uh, join the Discord email us at rubyandbeyond at gmail.com uh, I'll try to be better uh, again uh, this week especially with the finale uh, to have something on my YouTube community tab uh, where you can send in questions and comments and we'll, and we'll uh, skim through your reactions and kind of cherry pick <laughs> Uh, actual questions for us to answer. Hey, we're gonna uh, do will we be live streaming the finale podcast? Yeah, yeah we because we did that last volume. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh equipment yeah, I, equipment permit. It would it would have to be it would, it would have to be it would have to be yeah. 
Yeah, it would have to, have to be what? Like, cannot handle uh, streaming with with cameras and stuff. So I would have to. Uh, would have to be. The pie, would we'll, have to we'll, be we'll talk about that later yeah, in the week. We'll okay. figure the mechanics. Uh, it has to be me on your account or something, stream, right? Uh, next week's podcast. You know what? Fuck this. I'm turning my camera off. It's. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll, I just no. Literally. literally well, all I would all I would have to do is give you the stream key because I can monitor. I I would be able to monitor it from my end. I would just need the stream key. Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm willing to do it. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, we can yeah. do it. But but yeah, that that we'll talk we'll talk about we'll talk yeah we'll talk about that later in the week. Um. Yeah. Uh oh, my fan fiction. Uh, Ruby on. It's almost halfway through the final arc. Uh, I just actually released a really big chapter. Uh, the other day, no. the escape from Castle Dagon. Uh, I was super pumped for that chapter. A lot of shit went down. <laughs> um, other than that, let's see. Uh, I'm doing. I'm actually starting to work on some outline and stuff on my original stories, but not in not in yeah. not to the degree that I'm willing to talk about it on an open platform. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, support me on Patreon, please. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's uh you know I, I know it's rough take care of yourselves first but uh get me off the street now uh, <laughs> I, I, I could really use the extra income right now um yeah and just uh, stay tuned for for more videos in the future I got a one piece video coming out soon uh, I'll probably be next week actually uh with with helmet with you know the podcast and then the episode review and then we're also going to be doing Genlock stuff um I'm probably going to postpone the One Piece video to release next. This this coming Tuesday is probably when I'll release that. Um, okay. So until then, uh, thank you all for watching. Oh yeah, yep. uh, and then uh, also... I know I know Robert. Yeah, yeah. I know and I have Robert some. Has... I have something to say after that too. Oh, go ahead. Or er, no, no, you want me to go first? first? Yeah, you go first. Okay. Yeah. So no, I go. finally, for the first time in forever, uh, updated uh, fanfic. Uh, the well, yeah, Ruby Twenty Twenty. Uh, covered round one of volume three, so the very first episode. And so, yeah, uh, you guys can check that out if you want. I think it turned out pretty good. Also, I didn't plug this before, but uh, like I said earlier, if you guys, you know, maybe like Fairy Tale or want to like Fairy Tale, or you just like my writing style, uh, you guys can check out. I also have a fair, or yeah, uh, Fairy Tale 2020 where I, yeah, kind of take out, or yeah, kind of take the general premise. Or yeah, well yeah, do basically the same thing that I'm doing with Ruby. You know, just clean up the script of Fairy Tale a little bit more. Um, have a little more continuity between like some of the things that go down with certain characters. So yeah, if you guys are curious uh, and you want to know what Fairy Tale would have been like if it had been good and well thought out from the beginning, yeah, hey, check that out. So yeah, I'll agree with the first part. The second part, we gotta <laughs> talk about. <laughs> No. Fairy tale's good. It's not well thought out, but it's good. Okay. No, I agree. I agree with Robert entirely. If you're bored. If I'm bored by episode three or four of an of a show. God damn. It, it had a good. lot of good. I don't know. It has a lot of good ideas and some really heartwarming stuff and a lot of really likable characters. I really like uh, most of the cast, but um, yeah, the plot just really needs you know a lot of cleaning up and and. Yeah, certain part aspects of certain characters I'm also cleaning up. Also, certain ships. Some of the ships bore me. Some of them just downright offend me. So I've, yeah, Jerza. All right, there will be no Jerza. Spoilers. Fuck Jerza. I can agree with that. I can agree with that one. I can agree with that one. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Thank you. I'm glad, you we agree on, <laughs> I'm glad we agree on that one. So yeah. anyway, check that out. I've only got one chapter out on that one right now, but um. You know, so, yeah, so yeah. I'll definitely get that one shot. I'll definitely get that one yeah. shot. Hope you guys give those two a uh, check out, and yeah, uh, yeah, I welcome, or yeah, and yeah, I welcome uh, criticism. Also, I'm kind of, or sorry, I know I'm taking a bit of a long. <laughs> I'm also going back and uh, rewriting some of my earlier chapters of Ruby 2020. I'm currently working on rewriting uh chapter one because over well, yeah, part of the reason why i haven't updated that in a long time is because over christmas i got a copy of the anatomy of story by jonathan truby which made me really reevaluate a lot of my writing style and you know just my basic storytelling and i decided that i wanted to 
uh, apply some of that to the way I've written the my you know recent chapters. So one of the big things is just um, making sure that each little arc in the story, each chapter, and therefore each arc involved with it uh, has a kind of designated. Um, oh yeah, this is just one of the big things. Has a designated hero and opponent. So, for example, with chapter one, what I'm changing up is Ruby is the obvious hero of that one, and Glinda is her opponent because she's kind of questioning Ruby's decision to go, or yeah, or Ruby's actions, and also Ozpin's decision to send Ruby to Beacon. And so, kind of using their characters to bounce off each other and make it feel more like Ruby's going through an actual little mini arc throughout you know this chapter, because I think that's a really good uh, way to write here. So that's just an example of something that I'm changing up here. So yeah, sorry, that took a really long time, went off on a bit of a tangent there, but that's those are my plugins, check those out. So I'm just actually here to plug uh, us some more because, so we're gonna have next week, we will have the uh, finale podcast for the end of the volume and we will hopefully be able to do that live. Then Yay. the next day we will be recording two podcasts in a row for the first and second episodes of Genlock, we are going to be doing a consistent Genlock podcast. We will also be doing, of course, at the very least. We'll see how long I stick around for that. Yeah, but we are going to do it. Uh, Coop will be Coop, uh, the god of memes, will be here as well for that podcast. And yeah. um, but we will be doing that podcast consistently, at least for the first. Yeah, the season. roster may be in flux, but we will be doing a podcast. Yeah. yeah. If I don't like the first few episodes, I might just drop out. So. Yeah. Because I don't. Yeah. I know. Like. I know. I know. I know. Kitty is interested in it, and uh, okay. so is Secure. But yeah. 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 You, at you the will, very uh, least, you'll, might... you'll be replaceable. At the, at we, the we'll we might missed. call. Yeah. <laughs> at the very no, I least, I know myself and media will be here. I know I'm gonna be here. I'll be here. And I know yeah. High Power is oh, gonna yeah. be here too. Work, work so for bits. Yeah, I'll be here. At least us three will be here. Uh, also, we will, uh, as usual, uh, with our podcast, we will then be doing the sort of big summary of the entire volume of Ruby. After well, that, with, do yeah. we want to uh, also talk about kind of our origin thing when we do that? Yes, we might do that. Uh, that like, might be because that will be around the time, like the anniversary. Right, I mean, that might 2nd. be a separate podcast, actually. I'm not sure. But uh, we, I, I don't think I was gonna ask about that. Did, did we, did we want podcast? Yeah, I was, I was gonna, gonna ask about that. We, the story like, when, we've been talking that. about doing that sometime, but when do we want to do? That? So we'll do that sometime soon, whether it's a separate podcast or not. But we will discuss <laughs> that. Have how this whole thing started. Um, <laughs> if you're a Jake One Man Band fan, you might not enjoy it. Um, <laughs> no, no, nobody nobody watches him anymore i know so. i'm just why it's a joke that's why it's a joke um, anymore. and anyway. uh don't Streams. there will of course be okay. we are definitely doing a shipping podcast based off of all the stuff that's happened yes this volume. The, yes this february yeah. Ooh, i can't <laughs> wait to do my shipping video and you uh, and i need to tell you all i need to tell you all about that i'm excited uh, yeah i'm gonna stick around when, to hear about we, that when afterwards. we cut the, when we cut when we cut the camera yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so there will be cause... shipping a shipping podcast coming up again. We might have another special guest for that too. Uh, so just yeah, yeah. Look I'll, forward to I'll, all those I'll, podcasts. I'll and one more podcast thing that I'm pretty sure we've confirmed. Um, when we are gonna, we definitely got to do something for Star Wars: The Clone Wars because that is coming back sometime this season, this year. I think. Yes, I need to. And I need to. I'm almost that. recaught up on the entire show again. I know I'm, we're gonna I'm do not, some. I, I fell. I fell off. But I know season. Media and I, and I think I know at least Media and I have talked about how we are gonna do yeah. a podcast, at least I'd one podcast, <laughs> discussing that show up until this point. Heck, we could do a podcast on every season, honestly. And we will, and, we will have to. I'm just saying we could. It just we'll do uh, something to catch it, up. It, it, yeah, it's so episodic that I think we could just talk about the the broad yeah, strokes and that's fair. Podcast. But yeah. we will be podcasting that show when it comes back for its final season. At least were we also talking about doing a series of podcasts for the Marvel movies leading up to? Um, yes, yes, yeah, that, that'll Endgame? be yes. that'll be coming that'll be coming in. Uh, Good. We'll be starting that I, I think in that. March. Uh, I, yeah. I want to start I'm very excited for that too. I want, yeah, I wanted to lead up. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm we're, really we're hyped. For, I'm like really hyped yeah. for that movie to come out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, we're gonna I, do I a Marvel like podcast yeah. as well for you guys that are interested. Yes. So lots yeah. of podcasts yeah. still happening yes. while uh, <laughs> while Ruby is on its downtime. Just yes, I had to plug yep. that. 
I mean, we could even that's do, a good thing like, to plug. We could even do discussion uh, podcasts about like underrated characters, yada yada, kind of like some rant stuff. Because sure. uh, we've all got different tastes yeah. in like anime and stuff like that, so we could also like just kind of oh, like oh, just just a, just a sh- just a shoot the shit. Oh yeah, we could I, definitely I, do I a know. shoot we the need, shit actually, general we anime actually, yeah, podcast. We actually, need to do more, <laughs> we actually do need to do more more stuff like that because that people are interested in that and. Talk more, uh, my hero let's be academia. honest. Most of the reason We've people watch this now for years. You just need to turn on the recording Naruto. and not tell anyone. <laughs> well, no, because no, 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 because people watch the video podcast more than they watch the non-video podcast. So no, you can't. That doesn't work That's as well. True. You uh, <laughs> video having a video podcast help a lot. I've you I've seen the numbers. It's video yeah. is better. So you can't just like. It's kinda like hmm. yeah. yeah, we're the Ruby and Beyond podcast. Yeah. Plenty to talk about for that. Well, which yeah. which which might which might get a rebranding uh, in this off season. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. We could just call I mean, it the, the, the podcast. We could just call it the J.K. Simmons Worshippers podcast or something like that. Uh-huh. There we go. <laughs> no, no, no. It's obviously going to be Team Hemorrhoids because nobody has given me a better name. Yet. That's true. Someone nobody... said mustard. Someone, Someone said, well, like the... when, Someone I asked, said when I asked when I when I asked for a better name, everybody just said, "Ah, it's fine." <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to call it a night. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah you sorry. Are <laughs> but yeah, yeah, somebody yeah, left, and I didn't even. Somebody left, and I didn't even I, stop yeah, recording yet. I fired yeah. left, I didn't even stop recording. I fired had to leave. Yeah, okay, sorry. now oh, yeah. I'll stop recording. Bye, okay. everybody. Later. <laughs>